Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel that I've been gone from from so long, long ago. Uh, this is a paranormal podcast for those of you that are brave enough to join the circle today with Kat and I. Um, I just want to confirm with my team um, that all the channels are up and running before we get too far into this podcast. I'm just sending a quick text message out because I feel, you know, a little out of it. It's been a minute. It's been quite a while. And uh, it's probably been about six months since we've had a podcast up and running, which is crazy because I get updates from all of our uh, podcast outlets, which is, oh my God, guys, if you don't know where our podcast is, I know that like our main hubs are like YouTube and Twitch and um, you know all these other ones that we've added. But in case you didn't know, I would like to redo the list of where we're at. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, iHeartRadio. YouTube, Twitch, uh, Deezer, Amazon Kindle, Audible, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Stitcher, Tune In with Amazon, Podcast Addict, Pocket Cast, Listen Notes, Player FM, Podcast Index, and then the apps that the podcast is on is Podcast Player, the Podcast App, and Overcast. So you can literally find us on any of those apps. And um, oh, and we've just added a new one. We just added a new one. It's called Trovo. That is a new competitor that is um, competing against Twitch right now. So Trovo, T-R-O-V-O. Um, and yeah, you can find it all at ghostgirldiaries.com. And we're literally everywhere. But anyway, even the six months that we took off, I have been getting updates this whole time that like people are still downloading our podcast. And we've surpassed like we get these congratulations uh, i think that we're one of the top rated podcasts on apple itunes and on uh amazon which is crazy it's really crazy um really cool but crazy and um ooh, that's another note that i need to write down i want to talk about um one more thing right here before i forget let me write this down uh there, I don't want to, I'm trying to cover questions because, you know, fans have been, you guys have been sending us questions for months. I know that some of you are um, following me on Instagram, which is the perfect place where I update everything on my stories. And I know some of you haven't been. So I know a lot of people are like, like, which is it? Like, where are you? What's going on? So we're going to kind of cover everything. So some of you may know what happened. Some of you may not know what happened, but I'm going to bring in Kat right now. This is my kick co-host Kat Cormier. Oh, I oh my gosh, we're here. I know. I like, weird. I did a test run earlier and I was like, I don't, I don't remember. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. How do we do this? How do we do this? I like, I don't know where anything is. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so weird. it's been a long, like six months, right? Uh, yeah, it's felt like a year. <laughs> Actually, it's felt like it's like four and a half years. You know what I mean? Four and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. My camera's going but blurry. Kind of, oh, it is? Yeah, it must be my mom. Mm -hmm. Webcam. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, my webcam never goes blurry ever. Um, I mean, should it's a brand. It's it's an expensive webcam, and it sits way above, like, everything. So that's interesting. So, hi, Mom. I'm glad that you're here. She's letting me know she's here. Um, so we have a lot to freaking cover here. Also, next week, we should be able to stream live on TikTok Live. What? That I'm just like, yeah. So you have to have it at least a thousand followers to have this feature. Um, we we do. We're almost at ten thousand followers. Thank God. We we got like up to ten thousand in like a week. It was crazy. But um, yeah. we uh, for some reason don't have the link to be able to put our um, like live feed in it. So I had to send a ticket in to TikTok. But anyway, that it should be fixed next week. It's too bad it couldn't be this week. But that's okay. Elfie gets to step in next week. She'll be on TikTok with me. So that's kind of cool. 
And it's your birthday next week, you know what I'm saying? It is next Friday. It'll be the big 30. How do you f- how do you feel about the like dirty 30? I have mixed emotions. I I'm clinging to the last of my 20s for dear life, but I've been hearing that 30s are really amazing. Oh my god, Josh is here. So, Josh is here. Hey! Oh Josh my gosh, is here. I lo- okay, Josh is our Hello. security. He's done security. He okay, wait a second. Josh is the longest running employee I've had. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. For so for the evil um ex employees that say I'm the worst devil to work for, uh, I think Josh would disagree. Um, I just don't get along with women. You know what I mean? Like that's a problem. It's like girls are just catty and mean. Like but I think you, Elfie and I are so like dudish that we're just like, dude, I don't even want a drama. Like I don't want to deal with we're very go with the flow and like what's up bro yeah so josh we love you so much josh is here we're going to talk about josh later he um he went with us to to film um our features we have a lot to catch up on there's a lot going on here so much oh my god so yeah like get ready because he's like you need drinks like i have i have a diet coke here right here right this was yeah i have some water Mm -hmm. i have water i have a giant jug of water let's and you know that's a good place to start let's talk about um you and i no we're gonna back it up even. Let's stop. Let's not start with the trauma. Let's not just okay. jump into the trauma. I love how I just jump to the trauma. <laughs> Cat's like, get it over with. Just go. Um, My Aries. <laughs> and your Scorpio <laughs> rising, just kill it off. My Scorpio's like, oh yeah, let's get there. Let's um, get there. So backing up to, I would say like what? Tw- when did you get in with GGD? Twenty eighteen, right? Or it'll be four years ago in July. Okay, so. You can, oh hi Laura thank you for the bits we appreciate you thank you so much, um, so you come in and like we just became like really good friends instantly it was really weird and like a year or two into it you and I start getting into like I th- I feel like our spirituality changed a lot from when we first met like it started out with like okay the common bond was paranormal and you were like being hired on to. Um, you know, do the producer side of things and help me organize, which I mean, you're, she's amazing, by the way. She, she's like totally my right hand man. I would, I would die without Kat, honest God. But like, so then it evolved even from there to like, we started getting into like light worker stuff. I feel like there's, there's layers. There's like, you, you, you learn an empath, which we already knew we were empaths. And then empaths are kind of like unhealed light workers. And then, then you go into the light worker aspect and then you even go above that, which is like star seeds. We got really into star seeds together and we bonded over that and we started researching star seeds. And then we both kind of figured out we were Lyrans and, and don't, you know, as if you're a fan out there, research it. Don't just say, oh, I'm a liar and like Cat and Crystal. You need to find out what you are. Like, there's different characteristics and aspects to all starseeds. So, anyway. So, we go into, like, the starseed thing and just kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper into this, like, spiritualism. And then, all of a sudden, we learn about shadow work. And simultaneously, not even really talking about it with each other because once again this is like a private journey of like evolving we both decided to do shadow work separately but together it was very strange and at first we didn't even know each other like we had learned about shadow work but we hadn't really talked about it but you started shadow work I started shadow work and then one day we were like oh so we're doing shadow work and she was like I'm doing shadow work and it was like what like it was so what shadow work is is essentially healing all unhealed trauma, things that you kind of scoop under the rug that you don't want to face. Um, it can be as deep as like molestation as a child or your, your father leaving you as you, as a kid and having, um, unhealed abandonment issues, like any kind of wounds that you have as a child that you drag into your adult life that causes blockages in relationships. You've decided that you're literally going to grab the shadows by the arm and you're going to pull every single one of them out and you're going to heal through those shadows. And it's traumatic. <laughs> it's ongoing. Um, <laughs> still. Uh, but it is. It's a lot. It's very heavy. Mm-hmm. It's very, very heavy. And transparency is key. Um, you know, with yourself. Um, accountability is key. Mm-hmm. When it comes to, you know, forgiving yourself as well for past whatever. And, you know trust in a positive future mm-hmm. you know and you know, you will be moving forward from all of this even though it feels mucky well and sh- shadow work never ends like you can't just say like oh i've been doing it for a year and it ends like it, I, we still both have things that pop up and you and there yeah, you can definitely. revisit things and go backwards and like and go forward so a lot of people it's not people are not 
usually cut out for shadow work. I, I preach it because I swear by it because I wouldn't be where I am today without shadow work. You sort of peel, it's like an onion. You peel back all the layers and all the damage that's ever been done to you and you accept it and you sort of learn to live within your shadow self. And then nothing can really hurt you or harm you again. So it's, it's weird. I don't know how to explain it. I think that's a pretty good way to explain it. Is it is and therapy is huge, mm -hmm. absolutely huge, absolutely huge in the process as well. Yeah, there's times you need group therapy. There's times you need individual therapy. There's times you don't need therapy at all. There's time, times that you just need your friends and, and people supporting you there. And unfortunately, as this happens, when you start to shed these these old versions of yourself, your your circle of friends just gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So essentially where I'm going with this is, yes, of course I'm preaching shadow work, but only do it if you've done enough research. Don't just take this little blurb that Kat and I've talked about. I do talk about it in my book, Shameless Plug, Ghost Girl Diaries, you can get it on Amazon. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What? Ghost Girl Diaries. <laughs> Jesus. On Amazon. <laughs> Ding. That was awesome. really good. That was like really good. You know what I mean? It's right on top of my film book. Wow. You caught me. That was <laughs> I was like, she was and ready. She was ready was to ready. go. Um, so long story short is, is that you and I both also talked openly about having body dysmorphia. You and oh, I both talked. Oh. <laughs> Kat's like, oh, that's another demon. You don't talk about Every it. Every day. No, it's, yeah. <laughs> Why am I laughing? Um, no, but also like a body image and um, eating disorders. We both suffered from eating disorders. And um, when you go through shadow work, you sort of are, you're healing the inside and then you heal the outside because I think that you're not going to be able to heal the outside until the inside's healed. So we were both able to overcome our eating disorders and we both lost a freaking ton of weight. Amazing. Because, I mean, I've talked about it on social media, but Kat hasn't talked about hers, but she's lost a ton of weight too. She just hasn't talked about it. She's a Scorpio rising. She's very private. Sorry if I threw you under the bus. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, but it's just something to be proud of. Proud and of it. So, yeah. Proud so, I mean, it's interesting because for all the trauma and the things that we went through, because really Kat went through this with me too. She had her, her own trauma, but I also had mine. We went through it together. Um, that <laughs> luckily we had done the shadow work. Once again, it's never completed, but, um, and we were already losing weight and feeling good about ourselves. And I think that that just kind of helped us be able to survive like the quote dark times, don't you think? I agree. And, you know, in prior conversations, Crystal and I have had, you know, heavy conversation about this and like weight and like weight loss and all of that. And I think it was this woman, her name is Yasmin Ibrahim. I think I told you about this mm -hmm. um, more recently too, that she, she really changed my perspective when it came to weight and how it's carried. Because people think of it as the physical, which it is, and it absolutely is but it is also energetic. Mm -hmm. And when you're an, uh, uh, an empath and, and you're a giver and you care for people, we carry other people's baggage and we carry their energy, which can transmute into weight, mm -hmm. quite literally. So when you start to take steps back and honor yourself and honor those you know, with you on that path, you start to see and feel dramatic differences in your physical and your spiritual self as well. And it just, I'm telling you, it just falls off. And it comes with work, obviously. But um, that was a huge shift in my brain hearing that because I had never heard something like that before. And it really just takes it out of yourself and out of like the, the physical into something more. Um, and that's really what catapulted me into to mine as well. And just to feel better. The shadow I work better, too. I, I saw, I heard a spiritualist talking the other day. I can't remember who this was, but um, I study spiritualism. I just study these people that have these things to say. And they said, uh, whoever this was said, you know, you're born into this planet, this innocent little creature. You're just like a little egg, literally. You're a little, little eggy. And you were literally one of millions chosen to be born. So like you're, you're rare, you're special. Every one of us is very special. Like there's one of us and that's it. And this little egg came in so innocent into earth and we have all these problems and we have to go through shadow work and trauma and it's because of other people's problems that were on put to us. Like we need to strip away the layers and go back to who we were when we were born with all of that pain or society's pain, whatever you want to call it. So anyway, I'm just talking about this because I really think that um, we are so strong because we chose to, to walk this um, spiritual path and 
be healed and the past versions of ourselves are dead. They are. They are. And there will always be lessons and there will always be triggers and situations that will kind of spark up those feelings again. But it's, I swear, it's to just make sure that you're still in alignment mm -hmm. and to catch yourself and allow and, and give yourself grace to have a moment to stumble because it's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. But it's how quickly you pick yourself back up that really matters, mm -hmm. you know? It's, true. it's about the journey. It's about the journey, not the destination. Mm -hmm. Although we do like the jet destination too, but right. you have to enjoy the process as well and, and enjoy those little wins when you get them. Mm -hmm. And weight loss is a, is a big one. For us, it's been, we're, we're both, and our, our whole daily habits have changed. We're working out every single day. Um, you know, we have similar paths, but we're also very individualistic. She does things different than I do. So just don't copy things Kat and I say. I wanted to address this because a lot of people have asked me questions on weight loss on Instagram and it's just you have to find what works for you. My, what I do or what I did may not work for you, although I believe shadow work is, is the key. I, I don't think mm -hmm. I'd be, yeah, I don't think I would, if I wouldn't have healed, I, I really feel like if I wouldn't have healed the inside, I wouldn't have healed the outside first. Um, so now we can jump into the trauma. <laughs> now we can get down about the trauma. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> Um, uh, where do we start? <laughs> well, we initially started kind of taking a break in September. I was in the process of uh, sort of revamping social media. Um, I had sat down with Elfie, and Elfie was planning on doing content ideas. I was kind of handing off podcasts to Elfie. And it was only supposed to be like a short, like four to six week break for reorganization. And then October hit which is supposed to be our favorite month uh, because of who we are. And um, something really horrible happened to one of us. And when one of us is in pain, we're all in pain. We, we, uh, we are a family. And if there's past people from the past with Ghost Girl Diaries that fell off for whatever reason, it's because they're not family. Um, Josh is family. Um, he flew out when, when my mom got sick cat flew out when my mom got sick we function as a family Elfie's texting constantly hey check it in bitch are you alive FaceTime yep mm -hmm. so <laughs> we, we are a family unit so when one of us is in pain we are all in pain and that's how we interact and when one of us is having something happen traumatically we all rush to that person and support them however we can <clears throat> so cat sort of started the crazy train with trauma <laughs> And I'm going to, I'm going to hand this mic off to you because I think this is an important Ugh. conversation. Death is what we talk about anyways with paranormal. And one thing I think we don't talk about enough is how special pets are to us. And I mean, I lost Harley, my oldest dog in 2019, and I was freaking traumatized over it. I mean, oh. it's like when a pet dies, a piece of you is gone, literally. So go yeah. ahead. And I've really honestly have never been the same since. But um, I, for those of you that follow me, um, I had a bearded dragon for two years. Um, her name was Lily. And um, I adopted her from a friend of mine. Um, she had a sister as well, but they couldn't live together in the same tank because there was a male in the vicinity and the sisters were attacking each other. So, you know, animal life, it's fine. So I took her and she... <laughs> it was such a light in my life. She had such personality. She knew Crystal. She knew Crystal's voice. Mm -hmm. She was beyond smart. I mean, to the point where she would literally look you in the eye when you were talking to her. And I FaceTimed with Lily all the time. <laughs> I know. She would always turn her head and she'd run towards you. And, you know, it's just, it was incredible. Um, she really was just my rock. And, and to some that aren't necessarily close with, with animals or not an animal person, like, she was literally my child. She was like, Lily, this little bearded dragon was my child. Um, and things took a turn for the worse on Samhain, actually, on Halloween. Um, it was a very normal day, and she started to show some signs of um, wheezing, like breathing strange. Um, and she was doing this thing called gaping. So bearded dragons, they'll like open their mouth. Uh, when they're really, really hot and their body temperature is hot. And beardies love to do that because that's just a way for them to release that extra heat and they like to be hot because they're lizards, they're from Australia. So um, she was gaping a lot more frequently and there was some weird sounds happening. Um, and of course I immediately started to panic. 
And honestly, the worst part of it, it was a few things, but one was I called a bunch of exotic pet um, veterinarians in the area and no one would take her. Um, and at that point, I'm pretty sure she had already passed on. I was holding her and I'm pretty sure she had already crossed over. <clears throat> um, and uh, none of these vets locally would take her and they kept telling me to go to Boston. So I got in a car and drove an hour, almost two hours to um, a Boston vet where I will always go again if I ever get another beauty or another pet. I will always go to Boston. I don't even care how long it is. They were incredible. Um, they took her in. She was not responding. She, she was not breathing. They did two rounds of CPR on her. Um, and they said that they could have gotten her heart, you know, beating again or her breathing, you know, going again, but because of how long she had been gone, there would have been some major, um, you know, brain, brain issues. Um, so, you know, I had her put down. Uh, it was the right thing to do. And uh, bearded dragons, um, I, I'm pretty sure it's just a reptile thing in general. When they die, a, a reptile's heartbeat beats for 24 hours. It's the craziest thing. Um, so that's why we had to put her down after she wasn't breathing was because her heartbeat was still going. Um, so she was still in really great color. And of course that was very confusing for me and everything was happening so fast and there was just doctors coming in and out. And um, it was just really, I was a mess. Trauma. I was a mess. I didn't know how to function. Um, I was distraught. I was beside <clears throat> myself. Um, thank goodness I had somebody else driving because I would not have been able to handle that. Um, and I called Crystal immediately after it happened because we said our goodbyes and we were with her um you know when when she we put her down and uh i was just crystal couldn't even believe it either i it was just, i just i screamed so and fast. i was screaming and crying and i feel i i should have been able to be there for cat no, <laughs> i'm so I, sorry it was shocking. I'm... no it was shocking i mean it, and i'm <laughs> so when I'm, honestly that was really the only saving grace of all this happening um I'll touch base on that in a second, but I did order what's called a necropsy to see what the heck happened because she was fine. She was going to the bathroom fine. She was eating fine. Her color was So great. now what is a necropsy, just she in went case? Down. Um, a necropsy is like an, an autopsy. Uh, so they did an autopsy on her um, for, I don't know if it's for animals or reptiles <clears throat> specifically, um, but I, I ordered one to see what happened because she was in perfect health. I, I of course, as a pet parent, I blamed myself. What did I do? Did I feed her something wrong? She's so small. Did she hurt, break something? Like, what happened? Um, they took almost two weeks to get back to me, which I was I was a little concerned about, it's just because like I, it was really stressful waiting to hear what happened and what's going on. The vet called me, and she was also the one that um, was doing the CPR with uh, with Lily or for Lily, and um, also put her down as well. And um, she called me and was like, I'm really sorry, I did not get back to you sooner. She goes, I was kind of in shock with Lily's results from the necropsy, so I actually sent it off to two other vets in the Boston area to make sure that like my results were correct. And um, she said that she had nothing to come back to me with. She was in perfect health. She had no issues, there was no breathing issues, nothing wrong with the lungs, her blood was great. Um, her weight was fine. She had no signs of any type of diabetes or, you know, fatty liver or anything like that. She, it was just, she said it was her time. It was her time to go. And um, she chose to go is more specifically what she said. And um, of course that really got, that really, really got me because she was, what, two and a half? It was her birthday month. It was literally her birthday <laughs> month and she passed away on Samhain. And um, I just had a lot of questions. I was like, why would you, why would you go this soon? Like, why would you go this quickly? And it was shortly after she passed in that manner that a lot of other things started to catalyst and change in my life um, one by one, which we'll, we'll touch on that later. But it just, it was, it was um, <clears throat> definitely the beginning of some really dark times for me. I posted about it on social media. I actually posted a video of her just yesterday because um, I do have her ashes and I have a little like 3D photo of her and like this glass cube um, and her little paw print, like her little footprint and stuff um, in front of her ashes. And um, it's just so crazy. And what's, what's even crazier is how strong energy she, <laughs> how strong of energy she had. 
Um, she's very commanding for something so for an animal so small. And three days before she passed, I smelled my hamster. So I had a dwarf hamster um, a year prior to getting Lily. Um, his name was Gus Gus. Gus Gus. <laughs> He's like he little, knew me little, little too. Hangout. I love new crystal too. He loved his treats. He was a little chub love and like just the cutest little thing ever. We can't. I'm I'm allergic to cats and you can only have cats in this apartment complex. So I had to get creative with my animals and you're not allowed to have dogs either. Mm. So it's like what the heck. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> so little Gus Gus lived for about two and a half years and then a year after he passed, Lily came across my path and um. Three days before she passed, I s- strongly smelled Gus Gus, my hamster, in the dining room. And I didn't understand why. I was like, this is so bizarre. Like, why am I getting this pungent smell of, like, Gus Gus? You know, <laughs> like, of just the hamster smells. Like, if you have had a hamster, you, you understand what that is. And what then Lily passed, and it, I put the puzzle pieces together after getting the necropsy results, and I lost it again because it was, it was Gus Gus coming forward to tell me that Lily was getting ready to go and, and you know, he was going to be with her. He was going to be with her. It was the craziest thing. It was the craziest thing. Um, so for people that say animals I, don't feel and you have these two itty-bitty creatures, a, a bearded dragon and a hamster, hamster. They, they feel. They are, they are oh. part of us. They are a part of us. They, they are, are and... Oof. They're an extension of us. They're literally your children. They are your children. And it's... She was my baby girl. She was my baby girl. She was and, so um, smart. She'd walk on her hind feet. She was weird. She's she, so, was, she was so weird. She would even, like, I mean, TMI, but, like, she would follow me in the bathroom. <laughs> she would literally follow me. Like, I'd be in the kitchen, and then I'd walk to the bathroom, and you'd just hear her claws, like, on the carpet, just, like, following me around. I swear she thought she was a dog. Yeah, she did. <laughs> because she was just, like, she had free reign in the apartment. She had free reign in the apartment. She lived the life of Riley, and... I think hearing that those results back was a sigh of relief for me that I didn't do anything wrong, but it's just you wish they could live forever. You wish they could live forever, and um, it was just horrible. Traumatizing. Was absolutely horrible. Yeah, I was I was out of, I mean, I'm still out of it, thinking about her sometimes, but I was pretty much out of commission for a solid month. So now when a pet dies, and we can we can touch on this later, but after a pet dies, what kind of catalyst does it do to change your life? Um, it detaches. I feel like grief just in general can, for me specifically, it detached me from a lot. Personal connection, myself, my spirituality. Um, I was just in total mourning mode. I was in total, I was just in a hole. So it's a death and Quite rebirth. Literally. Oh, 100%. And, and it opened, when I came out of that, it opened my eyes to um, some things that needed to change. Mm-hmm. You know? which is just as hard, mm-hmm. just as hard. But um, it shows you that there's, a, there's a, <clears throat> as horrible as things are sometimes, especially when it comes to losing an animal or anything for that matter, anybody, it's, it sometimes can play a role in your life without realizing it. But you won't figure that out until later. Mm-hmm. You won't figure it out until later, and that's okay. You're not meant to have all the answers right now. That's not the point. Well, Kat and I have always, another you know thing, uh, we've had people try to tear us apart. And I oh, don't, my God. I don't think people realize how close we are in a really kind of disgusting way. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Um, our mothers... Oh, my mom must be here because the, the light just flashed in, in the room behind me. Um, right when I said mothers, what? she's like, yeah. Annette. Um, Our mothers were born on the same day. Literally the same day. Mm-hmm. Kat and I were both born premature with something called meconium aspiration. She... <laughs> That's a whole nother stream. That's, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's literally a stream in itself. That's a whole nother traumatic stream. Uh, we both have <laughs> asthma. We Everything we go through since music. we've met. Music. music. Yeah, we've both been singers. I mean, Kat takes hers to another extent of opera, but I was in a band, so that's singing. Um, and I've, I've been classically trained by an opera singer, so I guess there's a cross, cross way, you know? Um, but every time since we have met... I go something, she goes through something. She goes through something, I go through something. And since we've met for years, our paths have done this. This like intertwining zigzag where we literally go through the same thing one after the other. Like my mom gets sick, her mom gets sick. 
da 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 da. Her do- her yeah. lizard dies. My dog dies. Like it. Like that's how our life has been, and that's probably why when people have tried to tear us apart from the past, we're both like, y'all don't even know who you're trying to tear apart. We have lived so many lifetimes together. You can't tear these bitches apart, okay? When you've lived this many lives together, <laughs> okay? Glued. Glued. <laughs> okay. Stuck with each other. It's gonna be great. It is. It's a trauma bond. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, no. <laughs> but it's a healthy one. Is that possible? I don't know. If that's well, it is possible. true we're because aware. when we're either aware. of us goes through something and then the other one goes through it, we're both like, "Oh, I got you, girl. I am right there. I hear you. I, I'm right, right next to you. Like literally, I've been there for Cat, and she's been there for me. And like, we're literally, we're not even friends at this point. We're sisters. Like literally, and sisters fight. We have tips. We fight. You know what I mean? And it's gonna, ha- who cares? Like, you're gonna get over it. Yeah. Um, well, and, and we also know each other so well. We know each other. I mean, it sounds really messed up. I don't know why I'm laughing. We know each trauma. other's morning styles. Yeah. So, like, we know that when something happens, we need to take a step back for a few days, and it's no, they, we just know, like, we don't have to say anything. Like, we just know why. Well, or else we'll be like, fine. text, bitch, are you okay? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, of course. Like, we'll always just be like, are you just making sure? Are you alive? Yeah. You're breathing? So, just Yeah, checking. on both ends. Yeah, okay, great. Just, just I'll FaceTime you next yeah, week. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Good time. Um, so Lily dies and I'm, I'm also beside myself with it because I know the pain of losing a pet and I mean, Harley, I mean, I've, I've now lost a couple of pets, but Harley, oh my God, I, I literally, I probably overdid it with Harley in 2019, but he, I paid about $14,000 in vet bills to try to save his life. I was willing to do anything I could to save him. Um, and, and you're right. You're just they, they don't live forever. You can't. I probably overkilled it, but he he and I were like you and Lily. It's just there's something special about that particular bond. Past life bond. Oh, God. Oh, Harley's a lion on the other side. He's showed me himself. You know what I mean? He's so loud. I love him. So love him. then um, December, or I'm sorry, November hits, and my uncle uh, gets sick with COVID. Or I should, or am I allowed to say that word? Or will I get shadow banned? I don't know. Yeah, well, I'm I just- it's fine now. It's too late now. Um, well. it's go- I'm not re-saying it, but um, the Maybe Rona. The Kobe? The, the Kobe? The Rona. The, the, the Panini. The, no. Yeah, we called it the Panini before. Don't get the Panini. Um, panini. He got he got it. Um, he was older in his 70s, um, mm-hmm. and he invited over a family member who had it, and he got it, and within a week he was dead. And... Uh, that uncle was uh, an uncle that raised me, essentially. Um, he's the only man that raised me other than my godfather. And uh, that was my aunt's husband, so he's not by blood, but he's by marriage. And uh, no one saw that one coming. Um, Great man. Yeah, I mean, military, uh, you know, he was he's a Navy veteran. And, uh, yeah, that was weird. Um, didn't see that one happening. So, so now we're just, yeah. we're just going to start processing trauma here. So I just needed, you know, like each of these things happened. I mean, I know I'm not directly with Lily, but I needed time to heal from that too. You know, that once it, well, once again, we're a family unit. So when one of us is processing, we're all processing. Um, so then at the end of November, my oldest dog now at the time is Diva, um, who's 17. That She was like, bitch, you can't get rid of me. I'm going to live forever. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Yeah, she was a Chewini, which is Wiener, Dachshund mix. Um, she's been battling cancer for a while, for about a year, I'd say. And, and I've had multiple surgeries done to remove the tumors. And I just got to a point where I knew that we can't keep uh, putting her under anesthesia at her age. You know, she's 17. Um, I noticed that the, pre- the previous surgery, which I had done over summer, June, July, uh, was just a lot on her. And I just knew that if the tumor came back again, we, we couldn't keep, keep this up. And, uh, so I, I, I kind of knew, knew she was going into, uh, what I call animal hospice care at the end of November. And, um, I took care of her. I was feeding her, force feeding her three to four times a day for a few weeks. I wasn't ready to put her down yet. I just knew when the day came that I would know. I, I'm very in tune spiritually in communication with my animals and I knew that she would tell me. And um, on December 4th, 
she looked at me and said, Mom, it's time to go home. And, uh, oh no, here goes the crying. Here we go, I told you. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, just, you know, I've been force feeding her and taking care of her. And now it's like Lily dies and then Diva dies. And it's just like, whoa, you know, like my uncle's gone. It's like, whoa, too much death. We're done. We're done with death. It's just too much. And, um. Diva was, oh my God, she was my crochet partner. <laughs> she, <laughs> she would lie on my lap whenever I was over at Crystal's house and she would just like yeah. chill there while I was crocheting. I made her a blanket and everything. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, she was like, the, she loved like the old lady stuff. She'd sit there and hang out with you while you, while you knitted. <laughs> she was my cat. She was like, my, like, like old lady cat. Old lady that knits stuff. She was like my cat. She loved it. She <laughs> loved you. And it's weird because my diva was very snotty. She's a, she's a chewini mix. And um, she's just a snot. She didn't like people. She was very particular with who she liked. And when the first time Cat came over and sat down to knit, here comes Diva and sits right in her lap, and I'm like, okay, this is weird. Because Diva just, like, hates everybody. Like, her, she lives up to her name, Diva, you know what I mean? And, uh, mm -hmm. nope, she loved Cat, yeah, and so that was just, you know, cancer sucks. That's all. Cancer sucks because it's, like, doesn't matter what kind of money you have. If you're rich or poor, you can't, you can't battle it, you know what I mean? So... So it was her time, and uh, so that was really, really effed up and traumatic, especially when you've had a pet for 17 years. That's a long time. Uh, I mean, two years is a long time for Lily, too, but 17 years is like a child, like a... Oh, of course. It's like I a mean, teenager, yeah. you know? It's never enough. Mm -mm. It's never enough, no matter how long or how short. Mm -mm. You know, it's never... It will never be enough. Well, just the weird things you don't hear, like you said, you know, Lily following you in the bathroom, listening to those pitter-patters. <laughs> Diva marched. Do you remember when Diva marched? She marched around the house. Yep. She thought, she would... yeah, she marched and she was like looking for someone to fight, you know, like making sure nobody was in the house. And I just missed hearing her, her marches. And uh, so yeah, it's just trauma. So now we're going to get really into more trauma. Um, this just, I, I got hit a lot with a lot of trauma back to back. And uh, so two days after my dog passes, I didn't get a break two days after. Um, my mother starts to get sick. And um, I actually, I was trying to think of somebody who my mother, I can describe my relationship with her. Uh, a lot of people make fun of the, the Kardashians because they're so close with Kris Jenner. Um, yeah they don't understand that uh, closeness dynamic because a lot of people aren't close with their parents and they, they're like, oh, it's just your mom and dad. Like, you know, it hurts, but it's just not, not like a, a spouse or, or a soulmate. But my mother and I were close like uh, like the Kardashians are with their mom. Um, my mom was just like Kris Jenner. She would uh, release my sex tape if that's what it took to get me famous. Um yeah. Yeah, I mean, my, and I don't mean that negatively. I just mean she would, if whatever it took for me, she would do it. And, uh, Your she, best friend? Yeah, she was my best friend. She was my best friend. And I did do a podcast with her in September, and for some reason it's missing, and I just haven't gone through my archives to try to find it yet. It's very painful still that this all happened. Um, but my mom and I, oh, my, she was my biggest fan. She's my best friend. Um, there's something very unique about a only child only mother uh, relationship um, so I don't have any siblings and my father uh, left when I was eight so he was not very involved in my life very much even before he left he was not very involved in my life and so my mom did it on her own and uh, this is her when she, yeah she's very strong this is her when she was young and uh, yeah so she did it on her own and um, there's something about just having an only child, you know, single parent relationship where you can literally defeat the world together, you know, like we overcame so much together. And like, I came from, you know, I don't want to say poverty, but like, yeah, there were times that my mom was on food stamps and there were times that she suffered and she, had, she did whatever she could to get food in her stomach. And, um, and, uh, you know, not having my dad there for not only financial support, but emotional support. And she was amazing. And she worked really hard, worked a lot of jobs just to make sure she could get a, get me to survive. She had me in 
the, the best schools. I was uh, a, a singer, um, and I played piano. And, and so she just supported me no matter what I did. So um, two days after Diva got sick, which is December 6th, um, she got an uh, a infection in her intestines. And they think that it sprung from uh, her doctor possibly uh, giving her too strong of a medication for her body because she my mom was very petite she was like five foot one 130 pounds she's just tiny short tiny and um so this this illness is called c diff and um it's actually can be quite fatal in people if they don't get it treated right away there's like a 70 percent fatality rate if you don't get into the hospital right away and she was really sick and just um she didn't want to go in for two days and uh, she kept crying to me and, and she kept saying crystal i just you know i don't want to go to the hospital because i'm afraid if i go to the hospital i'm gonna die and i said god mom like you're this so dark like but like you're you're so sick you're at a point that i can't help you you're gonna have to go in something's wrong and i don't know what it is and thank god because c diff is something you have to be put on long-term iv antibiotics for that's how serious it is so we got her into the hospital, and um, she she it was a really poor experience at the first hospital. She kind of just suffered neglect after neglect after neglect. Um, the first hospital that we took her to was called Spring Valley Hospital. It's in Las Vegas, and um, we went to that particular hospital because that is where her heart surgeon works out of. Um, so she just wanted to be near her heart surgeon, so I respected that. Even though it's not one of the best hospitals, I decided to go ahead and agree to it because of her heart doctor. And um, it was just really, the C. diff is really contagious, so you have to gown up before you go in and sanitize. And the nurses just didn't want to check on her because they didn't want to have to go to out of their way to actually sanitize and clean up. And it's like, I'm sorry, but it's your effing job as a nurse job so they would literally yeah. just neglect her they wouldn't go in for days so I literally lived at the hospital and I was the one taking care of her in the hospital I was doing the nurse's job from 9 a.m. till 8 o'clock at night when uh, when um, visiting hours were over essentially uh, literally they wouldn't even clean her up because sometimes C. diff can cause like diarrhea and stuff like that they wouldn't clean her up the nurses wouldn't touch her they wouldn't help her change her bedding nothing so after she was there for a couple weeks, I ended up getting a hold of the nurses. Um, well, what, what the catalyst was, was she had to have a blood transfusion because she'd gotten so sick from the C. diff, she needed a blood transfusion. And her nurse came in, and I don't know what he did, but it took two days to get the blood transfusion uh, approved, which is not good, by the way. If you need a transfusion, you need it done quickly. For some reason it took two days so they finally get the blood bag up there and the freaking I'm sorry I'm trying not to cuss because it makes me so angry the freaking nurse punctures the blood bag somehow when he's going to insert it into her IV and it looks like a fucking horror movie blood just explodes all over the freaking room I sent cat pictures so she saw it it was bad unreal just Unreal. Honestly, it just seemed a little intentional to me. And they, they, so they got another blood bag. The problem was, is that now she has this donor's blood everywhere. I'm talking everywhere. It was on the floor, on her bedding. It didn't hit her skin or her head or anything, but it was everywhere. Dripping blood. It looked like a horror movie. And they let it sit there for two days. They didn't clean it up. Nobody came in to clean it up because she had C. diff. So she sat in this blood room, and I was throwing an absolute hissy. I was so pissed off. I was I was so mad. I was sending pictures all over the place to all these executives, and finally the nurse director comes down, and um, she's like, oh, my God, this is horrible. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And so she came in immediately and cleaned it up, and then they had my mom on 24-hour watch after that with only the best nurses. But it's a shame that it got to that point. Shouldn't have gotten. No. So, um, moving forward, um, I healed her back to health. She got rid of the C. diff, but she was really, really weak. And she needed to go into some sort of like a uh, rehab facility to get stronger and do arm work. And um, 
Somebody just said Scooby-Doo and the squad, let's go solve something. Have some effing respect right now. I'm talking about my mother who passed. Have some effing respect. Anyway, um, sorry. It's just not, you don't want to mess with a healed starseed. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, um, she, she moves to a rehab facility. I researched them thinking that it was the best one. And I noticed that she's been there for two days and her foot is starting to turn black. And I'm concerned because her foot's turning black. Obviously, there's no circulation going on. And if it's just the size of a quarter, this is not going to get better. So I ran down to, once again, just neglect after neglect after neglect after neglect. So I run down to the nursing staff and I'm like, someone needs to give her like an ultrasound or something on her foot. I don't know if she's not getting blood circulation, but like this is an emergency. Her foot's turning black. This is not good. And they ended up letting her sit there for two days. Didn't do anything. Finally said, oh, well, the doctor will be here in a week. They can check it. I'm like, she's not going to sit here for a week. She's not going to sit here for a week. There's no way in hell she's going to sit here for a week. Her foot could be black by then. Like, that means no circulation. This is traumatizing. And so I immediately went and called 911, and I had her transported to what I thought was a decent hospital in Las Vegas. It's called Summerlin Hospital. So... We transport her to Summerlin Hospital. Remember, she's very weak. She's just survived this, like, really horrible infection. And she gets to Summerlin Hospital. Now, why did I choose Summerlin Hospital? Well, it's a bougie area. You know, I'm just going to be real. There's there's two bougie areas. I, I lived in Southern Highlands before this, which is a very bougie area with golf courses and cats on my house. I lived in a mini mansion. And then I just recently moved to Summerlin, and it's it's a bougie area, and I've always wanted to live in Summerlin. So I, I took her to Summerlin Hospital. That's where, you know, it's, it's the rich side of town. I was hoping that it was going to be the better hospital. And uh, so we get her into the emergency room, and they basically check her foot, and they're, like, really concerned because um, there's just no pulse in her foot, and she's sat there for too long. She only sat there for two days, but it was two days too many. And yeah. they said that if she would have gotten in immediately, we may have been able to control this. But since it hadn't, um, whatever happened, she she was getting no blood circulation to her foot, and she was going to have to have it amputated. So she basically was given two choices. She was given a choice of either have the leg amputated or go into a nursing facility and die a slow, painful death from sepsis. And um, we both just sat there in disbelief and couldn't believe uh, what was happening. If she probably would have gotten in one day sooner and the nursing staff would have paid attention and done something, uh, we may have been able to save it. But it is what it is. And, um, of course, I only naturally have guilt for not taking her in sooner. But I thought to myself, for God's sake, she's in here in one of the bougiest rehab facilities for sure with all these doctors it was very expensive for her to be there they're not going to neglect her are they oh they did so my mom sits there and talks to the doctor and and the doctor says so what's your choice you either have your leg amputated from the knee down or you you die of sepsis what's your choice and she said i don't want to die she said i have one child and she's done amazing things with with this thing called ghost girl diaries <laughs> I'm laughing because I can hear the conversation she had with the doctor and uh, she says no you, you should see what my daughter's done and I can't die because she's done some amazing things in her life and I have to uh, I have to be there for her to see what she does next and uh, I couldn't believe um, my mother was choosing to have her leg amputated to choose to live for me and uh she's so strong she's a strong bitch so strong. and uh so the doctor said okay well we're gonna have to schedule your amputation and uh you know you can get a uh you can get uh you know a prosthetic we'll just do whatever and she was gonna do it and um she had the surgery on her birthday, which is December 17th. That that woman is something else, y'all. Like, she's something else. She went in on her birthday, and she came out. She did great. She did amazing. She, um, she had the surgery and uh, had her leg amputated. Didn't give a shit. I didn't hear her complain once. I didn't hear her complain about it once. 
she didn't. So, you know, the, the path to healing is, uh, takes a minute. And she, uh, I mean, imagine having an amputation, what that feels like is all I have to say. It's, it's a very painful, extremely painful process. And uh, what started happening like two days after she got out of the surgery, two days is not enough time to heal from an amputation, by the way. The nurses started withholding her pain medication. And this is a whole nother hospital now, remember. She's calling me screaming and crying in horrible pain, excruciating pain, saying that it literally feels like they're still cutting her leg off. She's like, I can still feel the saw even though she was out on, in anesthesia. And I'm like throwing an absolute hissy fit. I am just losing my shit with all these nurses because I'm like, I don't understand why she's not getting her pain medication. Um, there's a story behind that. But hang on, I'm trying to find the name of this person really quickly in my phone. Um just because I want to give receipts so that people know that I actually didn't make this up. Looks like my mom's here. She's still flashing the light behind me. Whoa. Yeah, it's really intense back there. Hang on. I'm trying to find um, this particular card of this woman. So anyway, I finally get a hold of this woman, and her name is Laura. And Laura is the um, nurse. Oh, here it is. I have it right here. Here's the card. Let's see if I can get a shot of it out here. Summerlin Hospital. This is this woman's card. And her name is Lauren Manoria. Lauren, L-A-U-R-E-N, Manoria. M-A-N-I-O-R-A. She's an MSN, R-N, N-E-B-C, nurse manager of Five West. So just so everybody can see that I'm not making that up. And you can see it. She, she gave me this card. Okay, so that's receipts. So anyway, I'm complaining to Lauren. I, you know, why is why is she not getting her uh, her medication? Well, in the computer, they were marking that they gave her the medication, and we found out that the nurses were stealing her pain medication and not giving it to her, and they were keeping it and pocketing it. So you have this elderly woman who's in her early 70s who's literally being withheld pain medication because your nurses are addicts and or drug dealers. And I've found out about it. So now everybody's pissed. I've just blown this whole operation they have going on of stealing people's pain medication. I, there was an investigation. Oh yeah, there, there was. An investigation that happened. There was, and I blew it. I was the one that blew it open because I was like, no, my mother's not gonna. Because because what was happening is they couldn't give her another dose of pain medication because it was already marked in the computer that she got it. And then they're trying to play this card of, oh, your mom's old and dumb, and she just she forgot she took the pain medication. I'm like, are you Oh, it's elder abuse. It was crazy. It was insane. So as if that's not bad enough, because I'm throwing an absolute hissy about this, like my mom's calling. You know what it's like to hear your mother call you screaming and crying? She's in excruciating pain after a freaking amputation. It's horrifying. You don't, they couldn't hear her. As, oh, yeah. they, they would ignore her. They weren't coming in to check on her. She had her nurses laid on. They ignored her. They didn't come in. To, so she'd have to call me. And I was literally having to go up the chain in the hospital, Summerlin Hospital in Las Vegas, to try to figure out who to call. I was literally, I don't even know how many phone calls I made to try to unfuck this whole situation. So anyway, Wait, this Laura, so then I, so I find out, so this other nurse comes in. She gets involved. Her name's Jennifer. Jennifer ends up going in the computer and looks at my mom's profile and says, oh, you know the nurse manager, Lauren, that you met and you have her card for? She put a note in your mother's profile that says, do not, do not go in and help the patient because the family is unruly and they just want to fight with you and they're just angry all the time. The nurse manager, the nurse manager put a note in my mother's profile to not attend to the patient if she was crying out in pain and to not listen to the family's requests and demands. Is that a nurse? Is that a healthcare provider to you? It's just a nightmare. A, 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 a patient's had an amputation and because I blew your drug operation, 
you're going to put a note in my mom's profile to not help her and let her sit there in excruciating pain when she's had one of the most traumatizing surgeries you can have? Y'all are evil. Y'all are y'all are evil scumbags. No soul. For real. No empathy. Nothing. So, my mom is sitting there just in horrible pain. And um, one nurse in particular... This is around the 27th, 28th of December. One nurse... This is a freaking horror story to tell. This is a freaking horror story. One nurse um, gets busted for uh, stealing my mother's pain medication. One nurse in particular. They demoted her, didn't they? They removed her from patient care, is what, what I was told. Okay. So this nurse got in trouble for stealing my mom. They, they busted whoever the, the main one was. On the night of the 28th to the 29th, so technically at about 4 in the morning, my mother calls me and puts me on speakerphone and tells me to just shut up and listen to what's happening. The nurse that got demoted or in trouble for stealing my mom's pain medication is in my mother's room. And she snuck in while my mom was asleep, because remember, she's been removed from patient care, so she's not supposed to be in my mom's room. She probably got in trouble for stealing the narcotics. She has now injected my mother's IV with an unknown substance. And within hours, my mother is not able to breathe. Um, I'm on the phone listening to this happen. What happened was the nurse injected my mother and the charge nurse named John walks in and finds out she's injected my mother with an unknown substance. And what I listened to was a 15 minute screaming match between John the charge nurse and the nurse that got in trouble because he's saying you should never inject a patient with a medication that's not prescribed to them. By the way, we've never figured out what that medication was. Um, I assume that the medication that was injected in my mother's IV was uh, erythromycin because my mother is deathly allergic to erythromycin and it's on her profile. So this nurse that got in trouble probably uh, probably got busted, um, you know, and, and, or found that and, and from getting busted and used that against my mom. So um, I was not the only witness to this uh, fight happening. Um, my mom calls me a couple hours later and she's not able to breathe. She, her, she's having um, chest pressure. She's had previous heart issues. Her oxygen is low, which means she's not breathing well. Her heart rate is high and she's begging them to see a doctor. And because of what Jennifer put in her profile, they will not even let her see a fucking doctor. I'm, I'm in there. I'm in there 24-7. I can only stay till 8 o'clock at night. But from if you bet your ass from 9 a.m. till 8 at night, I am at the hospital. I am screaming. I am fighting with people. I'm begging. I'm talking to everybody I see, begging someone to help me. I went down to the management of the hospital in Summerlin Hospital. I did everything. I probably made 70 phone calls to people in the hospital. She sat there for three fucking days with her lungs and her heart shutting down. And she did not see a fucking doctor once. On the third day, I begged with pleading eyes, Blake, to go up to the hospital. Because of COVID, you can only have one patient, or one, one guest in, because of Rona. I, I, I'm not the kind to ask for help. Blake has a previous history of being a medic in the army. He had two deployments under his belt. He is well-versed in medicine. Uh, he worked at a major trauma center in Afghanistan. I begged him to go in to see my mom. I know that he's a man and he's big. He's six foot one, 300 pounds. And I know that if a large man like that throws a fit, someone's going to listen. So he went into the hospital. He had to analyze her. She's shortness of breath. She can hardly speak because she's hardly breathing. Her oxygen's low, her heart rate is through the ceiling, and they're just letting her sit there. They're just letting her sit there waiting for her to die. 
and Blake absolutely loses his shit. Thank God he went up there when he did. While he's there, throwing a fit with the nurses, the nurses are so mad because once again, remember Jennifer put in my profile that her family's unruly and that they don't talk to her and not to talk to us. So Blake's just another problem. They called security on Blake. Security came rushing up, tried to um, get Blake arrested and get him removed and banned from the hospital. When Blake told them, told security, you know, here's the thing with security, right? Because Blake was technically security in the army. They just get each other. So luckily, Blake made friends with the security really quick, explained to them, she is dying and they're neglecting her and I am her advocate. They were like, we, we can't escort or arrest this person out of the building. He's advocating for this patient who can't speak. Thank God. Thank God. So while Blake is there with my mom, she stops breathing. She stops breathing. And um, they find out she has fluid in her lungs and they rush her up to the cardiac unit. So she's been sitting there for three days with fluid building in her lungs. Nightmare. Um, Shouldn't I'm, have gotten to that point. I think that they knew they got in trouble for the drugs and the narcotics. I think that the whole staff was in on it, including Jennifer. And I think that that's why they wouldn't let my mom see a doctor for three days. I think that they knew what they were doing. I think they were gonna, knew they were going to get in trouble for stealing the narcotics. I think they knew I was on to them. And they knew I was not going to just stop and, and be complacent, and they were going to let my mom die and punish me for them getting in trouble for the narcotics. So, um, my mom got rushed to the cardiac unit. Um, they immediately get her on medication, and they're going to try to get her uh, stabilized. And uh, I, I have a sense of relief at this point because she should have never been in a normal unit with her heart problems anyways. I think that because of the Rona, healthcare. I, I under look. I'm, I'm not going to disrespect healthcare workers. I understand that you guys have done a lot for us, and it's not anything specifically or personal. But I think that healthcare workers have been through a lot to the point where I think that patients are being very neglected because it's been been too stressful. But I also think that there's been some healthcare workers that have taken advantage of the system, and, and particular ones that were with my mom. Um, I'm not saying all healthcare workers are bad, but I'm saying the ones I've dealt with I, have now made me not trust healthcare workers. My mom got rushed up to the cardiac unit. I had a sense of relief. I sat with her for that whole day, and uh, she wasn't good. I just knew she wasn't good. She was struggling to breathe. She was crying. She kept telling me that it would be easier for her to die. And I was, like, begging her to, to hold on. I said, you're, you're in safe hands now, please. And by the way, when she got to the cardiac unit... She had amazing nurses. She really did. They were angels. Yeah. Angels. Absolute angels. It was nothing like fifth floor of Summerlin. Don't ever go to fifth floor on Summerlin unless you want to die. Summerlin Hospital. Um, specifically, fifth floor west. Um, long story short is I stayed with her until 8 o'clock at night. And uh, she knew I was tired. She knew I had been there a lot. They told me I could stay all night, and my mom's like, go home, go home. You're, you're going to kill yourself. You've been with me for the whole month. You're going to kill yourself. Go home. And you know what? I did, and I fucking shouldn't have. Honestly, I shouldn't have. I'm just pissed off at myself. It's just natural for grief. And uh, I left. I was tired. I was tired, and I felt relief with her being there. And uh, I got a phone call at 5.04 a.m. on December 29th that she'd had a massive heart attack. She had a stroke and she'd coded for 14 minutes. And, uh, they got her heart beating again. But you don't want to code past 10 minutes. If you code past 10 minutes, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. And... Uh, and she'd coded before, you know, she coded before on the heart table when she had her triple bypass. Um, she was put on life support. Um, the first day she was conscious, I posted videos on 
my Instagram of her responding to me, squeezing my hand and kicking her foot when I would ask her questions the first day she was conscious. She was on life support for 11 days. Um, uh, she, uh, she ended up getting weaned off of life support. She was on uh, what they call CPAP air, which is basically like room air. So essentially, the uh, the life support is no longer um, doing a job. You have to just remove them from it at some point. And honestly, she never wanted to be on life support. She came to me in a dream about five days in and told me, my body's not healing. And she said, you're going to have to make a very difficult decision to remove me from life support. And she said, I don't think I'm going to make it. And she said, I don't want you to panic. Um, she said, I'm trying to heal, but my body is not healing. And she said, do not feel guilt over this because I'm telling you what to do. I am telling you that you're going to have to remove me from life support. And she said, the decision does not have to be made tomorrow, but the decision will have to be made. And I woke up the next day remembering, and I went in and they were running tests and running tests and brain scans. If you code past 10 minutes, there's a 98% chance you have brain damage. For some reason, she was not showing brain damage. <laughs> so strong. So she was not showing brain damage. They couldn't figure it out. They were shocked. Um, constant over and over. Yeah, just disbelief. The doctors couldn't believe it. You know, they did all these brain scans and they just um, not showing not showing any trauma. Uh, it was very strange. And she's so strong. She's a badass. Um, not conscious, though. Her eyes were open sometimes. She was uncomfortable with the tube down her throat. You know, and, you know, it's just none of my business what people decide but let me tell you after seeing my mother on life support on 11 days you don't want your family like that um it's a plastic tube that goes in your throat it's a ventilator and the damage that it does to your esophagus is uh horrible so i'm going to be changing my will and testament as well um and making sure that if i am on life support it needs to be for under 10 days or, or even less than that because um it, it messes you up uh, they had to take the tube out. She was coughing up blood, and it was just horrible to watch. You just don't, don't, don't put someone through it. Don't put yourself through it. I don't want to be like that. If I'm at that point, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go home. I'm done. My body's done. So anyway, they had her on CPAP air for two days. She was breathing on her own, and uh, I was with her, you know, as long as I could be. I held her hand. I talked. Cried. I, uh, I was there every minute that I could be. I was with her for every second. We talked about when I was little and all the struggles we had been through. And, uh, my father left when I was eight. And, uh, I've forgiven him since, but he was a real piece of shit. He, uh, my mother had two vehicles when we were little, when I was little, and... He moved away with his mistress when I was eight, and the night that he moved, he took both cars with him and left my mother without a vehicle when I was eight years old. And uh, my mother and I, for years, had no vehicle and walked everywhere. We walked in snowstorms together. And I was little, and I remember having my, my snow boots on and just trying to keep up with my mom. and. You know, like, we can do anything together. And those were the stories I was telling her. I was like, if we can make it through all those snowstorms together walking, we can make it through this. We've made it through so much worse. We can keep going. We've made it through all the snowstorms together. We can make it through this. And, uh, you know, we were just so close. We were best friends. We weren't mother and daughter. We're best friends. I, I assume we've lived many lives together. And, uh, she was on room air for two days and I spent every minute with her and we shared memories and talked and I took pictures. 
And I swear sometimes she would respond by looking at me or, or blinking. But I knew that she wasn't there. It was just her vessel. It was just her fucking vessel. She was gone. She'd already been gone. If she was there, then her soul was in the room with me. It wasn't her body. And uh, I said, don't. Don't do this to me. I said, I know when I leave, you're going to freaking die. You're going to do it when I'm gone. I just know how you are. You're so strong. And you don't ever want me to be affected. And you're going to do it when I'm gone. And I said, don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. The first day taking someone off life support is horrible because you wait for them to die. If they've been on it for that long, you wait for them to stop breathing. And so the doctor had told me the day they took her off life support to make sure that I could be there all day. And she did not die. <laughs> she was like, nope, not going yet. Sorry. And I, I remember said, you called me and telling me those things too. You just felt like she was going to go when you weren't there. And they had to suction her from, you know, just the coughing up from just the esophagus being destroyed. And, uh, the third day, it was nighttime. I left, I left the hospital at eight, eight o'clock. That's visiting hours. And I got the nine call, the, the phone call at 9.01 p.m. 61 minutes after I had left that she died. And I was pissed at her. I was so mad at her. I was like, I knew you were going to do this when I was gone. I knew you wouldn't do it while I was here. I freaking knew it. And uh, I raced back up to the hospital. I got to see her. And then shit got dark again. You know, you're dealing with trauma of someone dying who was literally murdered by the nurses and uh she was murdered my mother was murdered by the nursing staff 100 percent. she was injected and she was neglected and she was murdered and i will stand by that and i will stand on that hill till the day i die because she survived the amputations she survived the c diff she was fine in fact by the time she had gotten her, the injection from that stupid nurse that killed her, her amputation had fully healed. It makes me fucking sick that she went, she made it through C. diff and made it through the amputation and died at the hands of some psychotic nurse. Psychotic nurse. Absolutely psychotic. Um. Oh, it gets better. If you think that's where the story ends, it doesn't. I requested an autopsy, and when that happens in Vegas, you have to tell the nursing staff you request an autopsy. I wanted to see if, I had talked to my attorney, and my attorney said if she'd been injected, we can do some sort of a um, blood report, toxicology, to see if whatever's in there is, is still there. And so I requested an autopsy to be done. And then when you request an autopsy, you have to fill out a form, and you have to tell them why you're requesting this autopsy. And then I had planned and arranged for a certain funeral home to pick up the body and they transport it to the coroner and all that stuff. And so I left and they said, obviously I told them, told the nurses, um, why I was requesting the autopsy. And legally they were supposed to get the coroner involved. When someone requests it, you respect it, period. Well, guess where she died? She died on fifth floor. They had transported her back to fifth floor. And I think that that whole nursing staff was all in cahoots. She wasn't in fifth west, but she was back on fifth floor. And um, I told them that she was injected by a nurse on fifth floor. And um, the coroner never gets a phone call. The coroner never gets involved and an autopsy is never done. In fact, the funeral home doesn't pick her up and her body becomes lost. My mom's body was my body my mom's body was lost for three days. I couldn't find her. 
I didn't know if they'd taken her into the desert, done something with her. You have horrible thoughts when something like that happens. You have like the most horrible thoughts. Like, did they switch her with another patient? Did they just take her into the desert like some mobster and like throw her in a hole? Like, you just have horrible thoughts. I had horrible thoughts. And, uh, and what do you do? Where are you supposed to go? You're helpless. Who am I supposed to call? The hospital's not communicating with me. They don't want anything to do with me at this point, to the point where they've literally taken my mom and no one can find her. I'm calling all these funeral homes. Nobody can find her. The coroner, I call the coroner. They never even got the report. They never even got the report that I had requested. Um, they probably didn't want to get in trouble. By the third day, I get a phone call from the originally uh, funeral home that I'd requested her to go to, and they found her. And, um, she'd gotten mixed up with another corner, so I'm, I'm or another, um, funeral home, so I, I know they did it on purpose. They did it on purpose. And the reason they did this was because if the coroner doesn't pick the body up from the hospital directly, the coroner cannot get involved legally, and that might just be the state of Nevada, but that's how it is. So now that they've lost her body for three days and she's been moved, the coroner can't do an autopsy because it could have been tampered with. Conveniently, which is technically, um, you know, evidence, you know, being destroyed. Um, but I found her, you know, she, my mom did not want to have uh, an open casket or visitation, but I had to, to make sure it was her. I had to make sure that they had my mom. And uh, I'm so traumatized at this point. It's just like, what else could happen? There was so much relief when they finally had the viewing. I could go see her and she was there. It was her. Uh, her wishes, you know, our indigenous family is cremation. That's that's how our family is, is ashes and ashes and dust to dust. And so I had her cremated. And then when I finally got her ashes home, I can't tell you the relief that I had with having her home with me. After all of that, I hired several attorneys to go over her entire medical report. And I was planning on suing the hospital, and I can't. I can't. Um, there are laws in the state of Nevada, probably from the mobster days, when they did sketchy things. They probably still do sketchy things. And the laws protect the institution. The institution is protected, and I cannot. I cannot go after the hospital. I can't go after anyone. And so I was processing that for the last week or two because I've had attorneys going over her medical record with tooth and comb and there's nothing they can do. The only thing I can do is share her story. I can't sue them. To say I'm traumatized is an understatement and the fact that I've been sharing my story on social media, you can't imagine how many people actually go through this. There's a lot so of people. people reached out to you. So many people, yeah. yeah. And it, it weirdly ties into paranormal because we go to these asylums and talk about patients being abused and women would get stuck in an asylum for having horrible period cramps and they would get raped from these people and, and the abuse that went on. People think that that abuse happened only in the 1800s. No, it still happens to this day. It's still happening. Patients are still dying at the hands of healthcare workers. It's just being hid, and the institutions are being protected by it. I wanted this nurse to be held accountable, and I wanted her to be fired. The one that injected my mother. I don't even have her last name. They wouldn't give me her last name. They protect each other. The system protects itself. They're not there to protect the patients. Messed up. Messed up. Um, so yeah, I, to say I'm traumatized is an understatement. I went through a lot of trauma. My belief systems have changed. My belief systems have changed. Um, I don't believe in heaven anymore. Heaven doesn't exist. The other side exists, and that's home. And that's where we're all from. Hell doesn't exist either. Um, just in my opinion and what I've experienced with my mother crossing over. My mother and I are so close with our bond that she's been very come forth to me about what the other side is like. I have dreams 
I have visions and um, I'm also very um, connected to my spirit guides now. They come to me with information almost nightly. I'm in the process of writing a book and I'm not saying that it's by myself. It's with my guides and it's with my mother because they're wanting me to share this information with everyone that's connected to the other side or wants to be connected to the other side. Um, when we die, we just go home. This isn't home. She's home. And I've looked at my journey and my path here and my incarnation this time very differently now. And um, I'm really excited to share that with everyone ongoing in the future because I'm still learning. My guides are still teaching me about what the other side is about. My mother's still coming forward to me every day with information. Um, um, I'm going to be okay. This is probably the most traumatizing thing I've ever been through in my life. It's probably the... Watching my mother suffer for those three days where she was, wasn't was able to breathe after the nurse injected her was the most traumatizing days of my life. Watching her slowly dying and watching nurse and doctor staff walk by in the hallway, ignoring a patient wheezing with previous heart issues and a previous bypass was horrifying to watch. I felt like I was in the middle of Times Square, screaming my lungs out, begging for help, and everyone just kept walking by. I move. I describe. Um. My mental health is bad. I have good days and I have bad days and I've been very open in talking about this with social media. I've been diagnosed with PTSD. I have nightmares and I dream about, you know, my mother's scenario replaying from start to finish and uh, how I could have changed it or fixed it. Of course, I want to blame myself. I know that I need to forgive myself. That comes time with grief. It's only been a couple of months. She died on January 17th. Um, I have nightmares. I wake up, start running down the hallway looking for her, looking for her bedroom. I moved a month, month and a half after she passed away, and so I'm in a new house, and I still get up in the middle of the night and go looking for her, half asleep. So I have some trauma going on from that. Mental health is very important. That's why I think it's important to talk about it. I've gotten two of my dogs registered as emotional support dogs, and they've been in training. Um, I'm not well. I'm not the same person I used to be. I've changed a lot. I, uh, I've been through some really dark times. After my mom got sick, Kat's mom got sick. Once again, we have similarities. Her mom definitely was not where my mom was, thank God. Kat had a fear, though. Kat was living in a real fear that because we go through things so similarly that she was going to go through something I was. I think she has also experienced some PTSD and trauma from living it through my eyes. Luckily, her mom's okay. It was not even nearly as severe. But um, I'm very... Blake was there for me through my mom and Kat. And if it weren't... And Josh, of course, and Elfie, but... My, my light just flashed again. Um, if it weren't for them being there, and Kat was there more than anyone because I was on the phone with her every single day for hours at a time, I don't think I would have made it through that. So I just want to thank you, Kat, for being my sister and incarnating and being there for me because it was the utmost dark time of my life. It was the darkest time of my life. And thank you because without you I would not have made it and uh, you know spiritually I've had a lot of psychics walk up to me since this has happened I probably had 30 or 40 psychics walk up to me in the last few months I'm not going to lie and say that I'm walking around with this positive energy like I normally am and I think that they can see right through it they see the baggage that I'm holding and of course I'm doing shadow work and working on it but it's just grief you know, it's, it's working through the stages of grief and I'm, uh, 
I'm not at acceptance quite yet, which is the last stage. But these psychics are like energy vampires, and they see me, you know, and it's like, it makes me feel some days like I can't go to Walmart and just go shopping because there's going to be a psychic that sees me and sees my energy and has to walk up to me, and I've had some shitty people walk up to me. I had this one psychic walk up to me a few weeks ago, and she she's like, oh, oh, you have you have some things going on, and I want to talk to you. And she's like, Let, let's step aside because I don't want people to hear her. Well, I'm not doubting her gifts, you know? Like, she's, she's like, your mother just passed away, and she's standing with you. She's been with you, and um, your mother's with you and all this stuff. And, of course, you know, it's to prove that she's real, and I, I didn't doubt that. And she goes, well, I can give you a reading right now for $50. And I was like, I wasn't out looking for a reading. I was buying cat litter at freaking Walmart. What do you want from me? And so I gave her five bucks out of my purse because she literally was following me around the store and I just wanted her to go away. Who, uh, by the way, who carries cash at this point? Um, I don't, I don't have cash. I don't even know where that five dollars came from. Um, yeah. So, so she starts telling me, and she was accurate. She's like, "You've got to forgive yourself," and like, you know, it's really nothing that I didn't know. And she's talking about my mom dying and your mom's with you and she's so strong. But then she ends the conversation with saying, your mother had a curse on her and it was placed there by your dad and stepmom, which by the way, I wouldn't doubt anyways, um, which I was like, yeah, I know my stepmom was a cray cray bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like my stepmom was <laughs> evil. I, I agree with that. I also not new information. Okay. She was the curse. She was. <laughs> yeah. But she, she but, but you know what that is to say to somebody who's experiencing trauma and grief, I'm going through the, a, a, like a murder. My mother was murdered and you're going to tell me my mom was cursed. And then in that next sentence, she says that the curse has now been passed on to me. And the only way to heal said curse is I have to pay this, this psychic $400 for a chakra cleanse. Uh, she's going to spray me with holy water and, and do spell work around me with candle magic. And I looked at her and I was like, pack sand, bitch. Like, I'm sorry, but like, no, you know, it, this is what they do to people who are vulnerable. Think about the people that will actually pay for it because they're scared. It's messed up. So anyway, I went and got a Reiki cleanse just to make sure and my, my <laughs> friend that's <laughs> did. <laughs> I have this friend that does Reiki cleanses and she was like, cause she, and she could see energy. And she's like, Crystal, you don't have a curse on you. I'm like, I'm just making sure. Okay. I'm just make sure. <laughs> Long. Just, long haul. But, okay. she, but yeah, just evil person. So then I had another um, psychic walk up to me. What was this? Two days ago? I told you about it. Yeah. Three days ago. And I'm standing Three. in line and I'm shopping and I'm having another mental health day where I'm just like, God, I just can't function. So I have to do some serotonin. So I went shopping, got a dog bed, you know. And I'm uh, I'm standing in line. <laughs> And I hear this guy over my shoulder and he's like, oh my God, like abundance, so much money. Like you're a Taurus, like you, you just, you attract Venus, you, you know, you're surrounded by Venus and you have all this money and you have, um, you know, so much success and like fortune, good fortune and your family has good fortune coming to you. And, and I hear him talking. So I heard all of this, but I'm like, is he on the phone or something? Like I'm, I'm an Aquarius moon. I'm very aware of my surroundings. You know what I mean? Like. And I, but I'm still standing there, like, just don't be rude and turn around. And all of a sudden he goes, oh, your mother was murdered. Your mother was murdered. And then I was like, Phew. you know, like my head turned. And, he, and then I was like, and he's looking at me. And so he was talking. So he's reading my energy, right? And he's like, I'm a psychic. And so he's telling me, like, he's like, your mother's with you every single day. And like, you know, telling me. And he did say some stuff that's like private and that was healing. And, uh, you know, like, I, w I was really appreciative of it. You know what I mean? And, um... We, we, I walked outside and he followed me and he'd asked me what my name was. I just gave him my first name. I said, Crystal, cause I, I know people are going to look me up. I'm like, no, you're not going to telco me. And he follows me. I said, Crystal, Crystal is like, you've, you've been around, you know, you've had a lot of psychics and he goes, um, I thought you were Christian. I saw your cross on your clothing. Someone said, I am sorry. I thought you were Christian. I saw your cross on your clothing. What? Don't even get me on this soapbox. So, though. so I don't have. So I'm not religious because I'm wearing black with a cross. Okay. Don't cat. Cat's former Catholic. Don't start her on this. Okay, that's don't another. Don't start with me. Don't start. <laughs> it's because I was talking about you psychics. Start with me. You, know what? you can start with me because I'm pagan. So oh my god. 
Oh, oh no. Happened. Like now Pagan. Don't Cat. even get me started. Cat's on the soapbox. You can't get her off now. Oh my god. Um, so um so the guy behind me is um talking about like you know, he's a, oh so he I'm sorry, he follows me out. God, don't get me confused. I thought she meant Christian, my Christian. I that's what that's what I thought. Yeah, I thought you were having like a psychic moment. That's yeah. I, I thought this. Like, I thought this person was, which is why I said she said Christian. I was like, oh my god, did someone see Christian here? You know what I mean? I'm sorry, Jesus. Anyway, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Dead. I can't. So um, that's why I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt it, but I thought when she said Christian, I was like, I saw Christian. Um, which is a weird correlation, isn't it? Like anyway. So this guy, this guy follows me out. He goes, you don't believe in psychics. Be, or he goes, you, you, um, you've had really bad experiences with psychics and you don't believe if they're all, all real. And I just kind of was like, whatever. So he pulls out a piece of paper. He writes like all this stuff on it. He like folds up this little piece of paper, hands it to me, tells me to put it in my hand and tells me not to open it. And I said, okay. And he starts asking me all these random questions. This is the same guy that was like, you, you have so much abundance and your mother's with you. And he's the one that said your mother got murdered and all this stuff. And, um, so I believe him, obviously. And once again, I'm not discrediting or like questioning his gifts. So, um, I'm holding this piece of paper. So he starts asking me these random questions. So he's like, if you have like a rose, a lily and a hibiscus flower, which one do you choose? And I was like, rose, I don't know. You know what I mean? And then he's like, okay, you have, um, you have four colors. You have red, green, red, and purple. Which one do you like the most? And I was like, red. So it's just like really random questions. And so anyway, it was like five or six questions. I open up the piece of paper and he has all my answers on them in order. So he predicted everything before I said it. So I know he was legit. He didn't really have to prove it to me. But we're standing there talking and he's telling me like, you know, like you, you have more healing you need to do. I'm like, yeah, it's been two months since she died. Like, I don't think it's going to happen that quick, you know, like for anybody. Especially this, yeah. like if she would have died naturally or like in surgery, it would have probably been easier to heal from rather than like a murder. Like she was murdered. Like this person injected her to make her, her heart and lungs stop. She was murdered. And then they let her sit there for three days dying. I'm sorry. She was murdered. And, um, so anyway, uh, so he's like talking to me and he's giving me more information on my, my family on the other side and all this stuff. I'm like, you know, cool, grateful, like, you know, but once again, this is unsolicited. I'm not asking, I have like no expression on my face. Remember, I'm having a bad mental health day. I'm really in public, but not wanting to like communicate with people. You know what I mean? And then the end of the conversation, he pulls out this other piece of paper and this is unsolicited. And he goes, I have three tiers, 200, 400 or 600. Which one, which one would you like to donate to my charity for your, for your reading? Now, what, how many people would actually do that? I don't know. Probably a lot. I mean, you know, you... He's saying it's for, like, not... homeless children and, like, children of the poor and needy. And I'm like, dude, I read energy, too, and you're full of shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's okay. Ah. It's okay to be yeah. an, an, a psychic or, you know, a spiritualist and, like, need money. And you, he does have a gift, but he's going about it all wrong. Like, all wrong. So anyway, um, he gave me his phone number and I texted him from, I have an extra work phone number. I didn't want him to have my personal number. I did text him today and I said, you know, I said, I just thought I'd let you know. Cause I think he was mad. I didn't donate to him. Um, but you know, every time a psychic comes up to you and gives you un unsolicited advice, you shouldn't have to donate to them. I didn't ask him for a reading. I wasn't out in public. I didn't schedule a reading with you. You walked up to me. You know, and so he, um, I texted him today and I said, Hey, you know, you were amazing. I said, you know, you're clearly gifted. And I said, just in case you want the offer, I run a like podcast and it's based off spiritualism and stuff and, and paranormal. And I'd love to bring you on because I think that, you know, if you were needing money for your gift, there's probably people, if I recommend you, they would be willing to pay for your gift because you are legit. If you're needing money for you or your like, you know, orphans, whatever you want to call it, like, but right. still, I, I get it. If, if people are booking with you, you're going to make money off of it. You know what I mean? And he got offended. He got offended. He's like, I don't do this on social media. Da, 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 da. He got like offended at me that I even would like offer him to be on social media. 
And I was like, look, okay. I was like, okay. I was like, I don't know if, if that's how you make your money, walking up to random people asking for money for orphanages. Good luck. But, like, that's not the way of 2022. No. You know? So, yeah, he got offended. And then he, like, I was like, I didn't mean to offend you. I'm sorry. Thank God I texted him from an extra number. And um, the conversation with him saying, like, he was offended and that he would pray for me. <laughs> I'm triggered. Okay. Um, so, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know that. I thought I would save it for the stream so that you could get. Oh man! This is this is Kat's live reaction right here. <laughs> what? The, you know, oh, so that's a way to get you. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. I was, and I told him. I said, "You too." That's what I said in the back. You too. Hell, Satan, Kat was. Um. Okay. So, anyways, now we're getting back into more lighthearted conversation. You see where I'm going I'm with this? Hot. You know. I'm <laughs> oh hot. God. Your Aries is out. It's so drink some water. Are you okay? <laughs> Your Aries is on fire. <laughs> See, I don't get offended by stuff like that. I'm just like, whatever, dude. I was, I was like, literally, like, I have a lot of followers. Like, you guys would absolutely love it if I, if I, you know, that if I'm gonna refer somebody, it's gonna be a legitimate referral. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And for, for the ability that he has, it was legit, and it would be worth paying 200 or 400 bucks. Not necessarily in a dying economy currently with gas prices at $5 a gallon. But anyway, oh, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know if I'm referring them, they're going to be legit, so people will pay that price. So anyway, that's fine. Let's, let's get off that soapbox. I'm sorry I triggered your Aries. Are you okay now? <laughs> <laughs> triggered religious trauma. <laughs> um, so, okay, Don't so... Hate I mean, who said I wasn't religious because I'm wearing a cross? It doesn't mean I'm not religious. Did they say anything again? No, caffeine, caffeinated Christy, I think, went off on him for a second. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Elfie, no, just no. Oh, Elfie's been quiet this whole time. Here she comes. Is her, she there? Her Scorpio stellium's like, I'll come after you. Boo. Um, <laughs> yeah, Elfie's here. Um, okay, so next topic is I, I, I had some people that tried to cancel me in summer of 2021. We don't, yeah. And we'll just call them people. Them, them, how they, sh them who sh shall not be named. <sighs> Invisible. <laughs> um, Every, everybody knows, but you know. Yeah, so I, 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 th I wanted to address this because I was kind of suicidal when that happened. And that was really dark time. That was a very dark time. Yeah, I was kind of well. suicidal because this person who's unnamed lived with me and I cared about this person as a friend and I financially helped this person I was going through a lot Blake was having mental health issues my mom was sick nope I wasn't really talking about it on social media my mom was sick she was in a wheelchair and uh, she'd had like a another botched job by another doctor and she had a toe amputated and it just was a botched job so I was going through a lot and um I really, this person was a, was a friend. Like, I consider this person a friend. Like, obviously, I don't think you just let anybody live with you. And this person signed an NDA and decided to do a tell-all video about me on YouTube, which has now been removed. Um, which, you know, thank God I released my book because I don't think you can really, you don't have any dirt on me because it's all in my book. But this person wanted to talk about Blake's mental health publicly by releasing this YouTube video, and that's messed up because this person also had mental health issues. I don't think you should be making fun of someone with mental health when you're also suffering from mental health. You know what I mean? So, um, and trying to, like, take jabs at me for it. And then the funny part was is that we go on to win five film festivals, and now this person can't brag anymore about being a part of it because... If you use me as a reference, I'm going to tell them that you tried to get, tried to defame me, defamination. I'm still building a case with my attorney for the defamination. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and, and by the way, I have dirt on other people. When you, when you have friendships, you experience trauma together and you share private information. And I know their private information. And just let me let you know that I would never share private information about these people publicly. So that says a lot more about me than you. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you want to share my private information and, and my trauma and what I've gone through? 
this is why we can't have nice things. I'm Taylor Swift, and I've locked the doors, and I've taken away the key, and you're Conway West. You know what I mean? Like, Well, you know what it is, too, is instead of focusing so much on someone else, you should be focusing on yourself. And we wish that for you. The problem is with people, because it's not just one person, it's a couple. Several. The problem oh. is, is that when you cut your energy off from energy vampires, they get angry. The problem is, is that when your energy is no longer accessible to others, it makes them mad. And that's what happened, was I had, I had too much going on trying to help Blake with his mental health, and my mom was sick, and neglecting myself, and I would never out somebody like that. I would never, I would never take pride in someone else's trauma. I think that's really sick. It's a lot of energy. Honestly, it's kind of exhausting to think about. You really have to have it out for somebody to sit there and, and waste your time and energy on the past. Somebody's always got to be the villain, and I guess I'm it because I'm the one that's built the YouTube channel, but I haven't done anything anyone else can do. Anybody else can build a YouTube channel. Anybody else can be successful. You just have to actually work to do it. But, you know, because I'm living my life publicly and you were an actual friend in my life, you decided you're gonna out me on, on private things. And I would, and I know some serious tea on this person, some serious childhood trauma, and I would never freaking talk about it because I'm not an asshole. I also believe in karma, and every time somebody does something hard or bad to me, I ask my guides to give them a lesson back. And it may not be the same lesson, but if your cat got sick or something happened, maybe it's because you put a lot of negative energy out into the world. And the funny part of Full Circle is I was so depressed and suicidal in summer of 2021 for this person that I thought was a friend outing me. It doesn't even hurt anymore. I just went through the worst thing I could ever go through with my mother being murdered and I lost her. And I am literally titanium bulletproof now. No matter what anybody does or tries to hurt me or cancel me because I went through trauma, ain't gonna happen. You can't hurt me. I've had people from the past messaging Kat that used to like volunteer with me. They literally worked with me for like three months of my life years ago. And they're messaging Kat trying to get us to stop talking and stop communicating. It's just ridiculous, honestly. Trying to get me to leave GGD. Yeah, trying to get you to, to, to quit GGD because I'm, I'm the devil or whatever to work for. And if that's the case, I guess you should have gone a while ago. You know what I'm saying? Um, but. It's silly. It's silly. There's bigger fish to fry here and other people that are going through worse things, a.k.a. what Crystal went through. Yeah, you know, you when, you, know. when you haven't had adult problems like I have, none of that stuff matters anymore. Adult problems are when your mom's murdered and you've gone through real trauma. Everything else doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It's idiots and ignore them. But, you know, I stopped talking to a lot of these people because they all talked shit about each other. Behind each They're other's backs. They're probably watching. They're and, and, probably watching. But they all talk about each other and they don't even know it. They talk bad about each other and they're trying to be friends. And they don't even know they've already turned against each other and it's embarrassing. And They have talked about each other. Oh, yeah. Period. And now... I've won five film festivals as a director, which I'm very proud of. Congratulations. You've won five festivals as a producer. Congratulations. And we can brag about that. We can brag about that. And, that. and yeah, here we are. And um, it kind of kind of goes into soul contracts, too, like um, how important soul contracts are. Like you and I incarnated together. My mom and I are a soul contract. I'm really getting into some spiritual shit, so I can't wait to share that with you guys. I know a lot of people are going to ask, like, you know, we got signed to a major production company last summer, Elfie, Cat and I, and how's that going? So I wanted... A year... Was it a year? Ago. Yeah. Yeah, a year ago, two... A year ago, two days ago. Okay. So I we're not out of contract yet until mid-May, so I can't really talk about specifics. Um, I'm, still, I'm still having the same battle I've ever had, which is female and paranormal. Um, the series tried to get signed as witches in Paranormal, and I knew that would tank because executive producers that are involved with networks are old white men. Let's just be real. 
and old white men are Christian, and old white men don't like witchy stuff, and old white men don't want to put, um, you know, four million dollars into doing a series or something like that, because it's scary to think that you're a, quote, witch or a pagan, um, whatever. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> but 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 the truth is, is I I didn't want to I didn't want to sell it as a witch show, I didn't want to. No. I didn't want to. You know, like Elfie and Cat do practice the craft. Me, not really. Honestly, I, I've tried it before, but not really, not really into it anymore. Um, you know what? And that also goes into the practice of, you know, being a witch and witchcraft is not an aesthetic; it is a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and it's you're right. They were trying. They were going to try to sell it to make money off of the witchy the aesthetic. Sense, yeah, which would have caused even more chaos within the community. That's not how it's supposed to be. Right. That's not, that's not well, it. and and I knew essentially when we tried to sell this as a witchy show, it wasn't going to work. I just knew it. But I can't no, control what producers decide. I can only, you know. Of course, but I mean, like wearing black and stuff doesn't necessarily equate to. You know what I mean? Like I don't think that would have. Yeah. Because because I'm wearing a cross and black lace doesn't mean I'm a, a Satan worshiper. Let's just get that clear. Sorry, that's my dogs. Um, they well, barked at that. that I thought you? that was a person talking. I was like, no. Hello? Um, Woo! But anyway, so yeah, I'm, I'm crabby about it because it's just we're still at this same uphill battle. Am I done trying to get it signed? No, I'm not done with that. Um, we just have to reroute a little bit here and we did reroute because in February after my mom passed I was a mess and Kat flew out for like what three or four weeks or something like that two weeks yep. two three weeks two and a half weeks it was like two and a half weeks I think yeah and while we were sitting there one night hanging out <laughs> it's like you know Wait, wait, like, like it wasn't a total one night idea. Like we'd been throwing around shooting a, another pilot or a feature for like a while. Yeah, but I think after ha like everything that happened with, you know, uh, crazy ex employees and such, um, it was just a lot to think about. It was a lot to think about. It you was. know? Yeah, hitting the record button is really easy usually, but like that was overwhelming for some people. You know. I just want to go there. So, but we had, we had talked about, and especially we were kind of on a high from winning five film festivals. We were like, we can't really let this go to the wayside. I think we really stand a good shot at this. What if we do this again, but do it like even freaking better? Yeah. And so we, it's not like it was a total overnight, but like there was one night you were in Vegas and when Kat's in Vegas, shit's crazy. We're just, like, we're running around. We're, like, shopping. We're doing all kinds of stuff. And it was, like, a breath of fresh air. I needed it because I felt like I had just been, suff you know, suffocated for so long with dealing with my mom in the hospital. I'm sick. And um, one night, Kat's like, dude, we need to just shoot another freaking movie. Like, shoot something. And I was like, What? Like so right now, and she's yeah, like, she she's like, yeah, like right now. She's like, I know you're upset, and she's like, if you can't handle travel, but she's like, I think if you get out of the state, you're gonna feel better. And I was like, oh my god, oh my god. Mm -hmm. So like yeah. for uh, for a couple of days, I was wishy washy. Remember, I was like, I don't know, I don't know. I'm such yeah. a perfectionist when it comes to a shoot. I was like, do you think we can pull this off really quickly? Yeah. And you're like, we've got this. We've got this. And so we did we did the we we did the pilot. Yeah, you and I. You and I. Yep. Did the pilot. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, even even post production. Yeah. Yep, 100%. Um every mail, mailers and everything. Oh my know? god. Like, we have to share that story. Dude, that was today. fun. That was so fun. <laughs> um <laughs> So, so one time. day we wait, I wake up and I ha I'm done being, and you weren't, you weren't pushing me, which was great. But you like, even Elfie was like, I think this is so a freaking great idea. Like Elfie's like, oh my God, Elfie wasn't going to be able to fly out, but she's like, I'm going to do all the research. So she did all the research. Uh -huh. So she I, did. I wake up one day and I, I'm like, okay, I, I had a dream, I had a dream that my mom came to me and she was like, you need to go shoot this. If not now, when? And she gave me a list of locations. My freaking mother. Yeah. And I was like, I don't think we can do this. 
And you were like, why? You're like, your mom literally gave you the answers. And I was like, I just don't think we're, I don't think, I don't know. I was like, I'm stressed. Remember? I was like, I don't think I can. <laughs> I, I remember. And we wrote, then- we wrote like a map. Remember? I think we went to like Roberto's. Remember we went to Roberto's? And, we did. We, do, we went to Roberto's. And we wrote like a map of like all the locations. And it was a perfect, and by the way, I didn't know where we were. I hadn't been to some of these locations. And it was like a perfect circle of where we were going. And so my, and my mom told me in order which ones to go to. And we're not going to share everything on here because, you know, it's going to be released as a feature documentary film, Paranormal. But um, I called Josh, who is, like I said, Josh has worked for me the longest. I freaking love him. He's like a brother to me. Josh is head of security. So anytime we're on location and we need, he was also there for the pilot. And if we need to like hire extra security or whatever, Josh is, it's his job to do that. And oh, he, yeah, he's amazing. Um, on here. Hi, Josh. I think he was earlier. Um, okay. So Josh is like, yeah, I'm going to fly out. I'm going to fly out. And I'm like, oh my God. Like this Literally is a- like, like this. In like a day. And I, look, I remember, I remember it vividly because I was like, you know what? Rip the band aid. Let's just ask in group chat if he'd be willing to come out, you know, give it a couple days and then have him come out. Well, even Elfie, I, I felt bad for <laughs> Elfie. Cause I was like, she's going to have to research really quick. She's like, nope, I got it. I got it. Don't worry. And I was like, <laughs> like fine i'm five and you know he was like yeah i'll be out there like two days or something i remember looking over at you and you were looking at your phone like i was like wait a second this is happening and i'm scared yeah it was yeah and yeah so we we road tripped it man for like a week and uh the airport and went yeah poor josh didn't even get a break he got in the car and then we were gone so not sleep we did, um, ooh, some paranormal reservation, paranormal stuff. You mean, like, um, you mean, like, uh, indigenous stuff? Yeah, the, I, yeah. Well, we did that for the pilot. We did do that for the pilot. Um, yeah. but we, we sh- yeah, we should do more for sure. Um, so we went to Arizona first, and we went to a few places in Arizona. We don't want really to talk about all, but let's talk about Jerome. You got to experience Jerome. I did. Which Jerome is where I left off with my professional career in 2011 with Travel Channel. And I felt the need to return to Jerome. It's a little bit of like the return to Jerome. And um, I don't know, I kind of want to hand the mic to you and just let, like, I want I want people to hear what you, like, it, Jerome is so important to me because of Travel Channel. And yeah. I've been there so many times and I haven't taken a lot of people there because I do think it, t- it takes an experienced investigator. So like, I want you to talk about like, how does it feel when you first go into the town? So Jerome is a mining town, just so you know, it sits on like literally the side of a mountain. It has minerals, mainly copper, but they have everything, gemstone. They mined everything back in the day, 1800s, 1900s, um, old mining town, lots of like uh, explosions that happen, so that's why it's so haunted. A lot of the miners' wives would die in childbirth. Yeah, just like I want to hear like what it felt like when you first drove in. Like I told you, it was so weird when you drive in because you can't see that all of a sudden the cliff just drops off, and then you you drive in and there's it's literally a cliff. Hey, it was actually really funny because when we were driving in, it was nighttime, so it was. I feel like there's a big difference between day and night in Jerome specifically like daytime touristy beautiful energy like really great and the energy of Jerome in general is amazing mm-hmm. but at night it shifts mm-hmm. something shifts into something else and I wouldn't nec- I mean I wouldn't necessarily label it as darker but it's heavy mm-hmm. it's heavy and um, it was really funny because when we finished some things and filming and all of that um, we were driving in, during the daytime and we were driving on those cliffs and like the road I was like oh my god it just goes straight down it could, I didn't see that when we came in originally at night you couldn't see anything and then you look over the ledge and it's, you're like <laughs> literally I just feel like the whole town is like tilting like it this. is it literally mm-hmm. the houses are on stilts some of them yeah yeah like yeah I mean incredible and the people there are amazing yeah. amazing food is great too yeah but um yeah, Jerome, I am so happy I experienced that. I got to experience that. Thank you. For you did amazing, by the way. That. Like, I wasn't I, sure because I didn't know how, you know, I haven't, it, it does, don't you, I, do you agree it takes an experienced investigator, though? It does. And you know what? Like, 
I, I was always, you know, the newbie, and I loved, I did, like, informal paranormal investigating back in school, mm-hmm. but, like, I loved it. I loved it, and, you know, in the beginning, it, I was jumpy, and I still am a little bit jumpy, and, you know, all of that, but I feel like now, being able to go to Jerome and do this from a different perspective and from doing it for a few years, mm-hmm. it feels different. Yeah. No, you it did was, amazing. Was, you're not, you're not a newbie anymore. Like, you're good. Mm-hmm. You're good. I feel good. I feel good now. I feel like that was like my initiation without it being labeled as such. You mean Jerome? Yeah. Really? Like, I felt like Jerome for me was a challenge for me to like really solidify like being a paranormal investigator. I remember when we're driving, I was in the back seat when we first drove into Jerome because I was filming <laughs> in the back seat. I had the camera. I remember I was like, um, yeah, it was- Josh was driving, you were in the front seat and I'm filming like B-roll through the mountains and stuff like that. And um, I was like... I, I was trying to tell you guys, like, how to get there. I was like, okay, you're going to freak out because when you come in, it's going to look weird. It's going to feel weird. You're going to feel like, you know, but, like, you don't lost. feel lost. Yeah, well, he thought, Josh thought you were lost, and we weren't. I was like, don't worry, you're, you're fine. Like, and so we go into the drum, and I, I remember hearing Kat, and she was, like, in the front seat, like, oh, like, they just <laughs> making that noise, like, oh, like, she was, like, was so like, scared. Okay. I was literally, because it's a a shift. It's like a wall, Uh energetically. And you could feel it in your heart, and Josh could feel it in his heart, too. I know. Because he kept going like this in the car. And we, he and I were like, we're going to turn here. We're going to turn right here. We're so discombobulated. Like, we were lost. And then the GPS kept cutting out. And we were like, yo. We kept driving around for like an like what felt like an hour. But well, we you, it's, a, it's a two-way, but it's a one-way. And there's not a lot of places to turn around. So, and I had told you guys, I was like, no, this doesn't look like a street, but it is turned. And Josh was like, no, it doesn't feel safe. It doesn't feel right. And I was like, I don't think I can turn down that road. And then when we pulled up to where we were at, the location. Well, you, we've posted. So, we, I mean, one of the locations okay, okay, was wait. Jerome I'm just, Grand. I'm just like, teeter, yeah. okay, Jerome, Jerome Grand. Um, we were like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Josh and Kat, like, yeah, you guys were like, oh, it, it's not, oh, you don't expect it to look like, it's big. No, it is huge and towering and history and, like, heavy, heavy, and I was like, yo, I couldn't <laughs> wait to get inside. I couldn't wait to get inside. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was so fun. It was so fun. I felt like doing it like that was perfect. Yeah. Because I feel like if you plan it out, you have more time to think about it. You know, whereas if you do something a little bit more impromptu, you're just like, let's freaking do it. Because I have a feeling that if we planned Jerome Grand, it probably would have been in my head a little bit more. You think? Especially, have, yeah, I think so. Really? I think so. Especially given the history and, like, your experiences there right. and everything else, I feel like it would have been more in my head. Whereas we just ripped the Band-Aid and I was like, yo, let's go. Right. Let's go. Let's go right now. So right. explain the feeling between, like, you know when we filmed on the mines outside or like up in the hills of Jerome? Mm. Explain that feeling versus in the town of Jerome. Um, it's really interesting. Before I talk about the difference, I feel like the similarity was people were watching. Yeah. And you felt that, I, for me, I felt that in the mountains and I felt that in town, including the daytime. Well, no, we had the drone out. We were getting drone footage, and people yeah. just stared. They just want to watch. Yeah, they just want to yeah, watch. Yeah, but, but you could also tell it was, like, small town, mm-hmm. heavy, and, like, you know, like, clearly very, like, you know, haunted. They knew it, and there was, like, new people right. in town. And we, and we always carry ourselves with an energy of just, like, let's go get, let's go get shit done. Mm-hmm. And then we had security with us, you know. But um, it's otherworldly it's otherworldly the mountains and doing that drone footage and looking out you know at everything felt um to me it almost felt like a portal yeah it felt like a portal Mm -hmm. um and it it was very like you'd shift one air one place standing still and you'd feel one way and then you'd shift another and you would feel a different way and i don't know if that's because of the ore or you know, just the area itself, like the energy, the grounds held, made you feel that way. But um, it was crazy intense. And then in town, it felt more solidified. Like I, I felt like I didn't want to leave. I felt like my feet were grounded in place, and I did not want to leave Jerome. Yeah. Yeah, so, you, you didn't want to leave Jerome. You were like, I kind of. Oh no, I wanted to stay longer. Yeah. I wanted to stay longer. Yeah, it's um. I liked it. 
Well, then even explain the difference, like, in the cemetery, because not a lot of people know where that is. I only know my the back way behind the town because I know locals there. But what's the cemetery? It, it sits on the other side of town. People don't even know it exists because it's that weird street, remember, that we bottomed the car out on? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> We didn't bottom the car out. No, it didn't. It didn't happen. We didn't do that. It didn't happen. But you sit in the cemetery Um, and you look up at the town, and it's all—it's another eerie perspective, isn't it? Really, like very hills have eyes. Yeah. Type of energy for real, but also very spiritual. And there were there were some good moments in it, but Mm -hmm. they also did not mess around with whatever resided there, Mm -hmm. entity wise, energy wise. Like, they respected it. Mm-hmm. There was a major respect. Yeah, in and the I cemetery, remember, they, have, um, they have shrines set up uh, that are, like, crystals and stuff like that, I think, to keep the energy protected. I remember Crystal very specifically was, like, dead like dead serious. You were like, don't touch anything in the cemetery. Don't touch it. Leave it. Uh-huh. Don't pick it up. And, and I was like, okay. And then I walk through a cemetery, I'm like, okay, yeah, I get it. I, I understand now, you know? Yeah. Because there's miscellaneous things spread around. There's mm. crystals, and there's, mm. like, skulls, and there's bones. Like, you know, it there was just, like, weird miscellaneous stuff, but it was there for a reason. Yeah, animal bones. And it was like, don't. Yeah, it's not, um, it. I don't want people to get the wrong idea, because I know the locals oh, no. in Jerome. It's not like they're yeah, doing yeah. rituals. It's, uh, no. they're trying to keep like things opera. protected. Yeah. It's offerings, offerings and protection, and a lot yeah. of some of the older graves they'll have um, crystals set up around them, and you just don't mess with it. Don't don't touch it. it. The locals live there. Let them respect the dead how they respect the dead. There's there's animal skulls and antlers, and that's how it's always been. And just don't disrespect the energies. Don't disrespect. That's you know it, even if it is real, ritualistic, you don't disrespect. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. And, yeah, Kat didn't realize what I meant when we went in because there was literally, like, a crystal grid tripod set up with crystals, remember? Like a circle. Yeah. Like a circle with, like, this... A crystal... It was like a satellite. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, like, and Josh was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and I was like, don't touch it. Just don't touch it. Don't touch it. Yeah. And, we're going to go in and we're going to get out. Yeah, we just got some really I'm cool... Standing there. Really? Probably While from... you were talking earlier, something flew off my desk. I don't know if you noticed that. No, I, I was, didn't. like, freaking out. Something flew off my desk, and I was like, that blew off my desk. <laughs> and I just thought I saw someone standing What? Uh, what were you, from Jerome? From chatting about Jerome? Yeah. Oh, God. You thought something was in the kitchen the other night, too. It's a freaking crawler. Okay, we're just not going to talk about oh, that. Oh, no, we're going to talk about that, because that's hilarious. Oh, wait. The whole thing's hilarious. We have to talk it about it. It is hilarious. Because this stuff, we can't, we can't keep it. <laughs> we can't put this <laughs> in the features. We have to talk about it, okay? <laughs> We have to talk about the behind the scenes. People may not get it, or else they'll think we're stupid, but it's fine. You know what I mean? Like, laugh the whole time and not talk, and everyone's going to be like, what is wrong with these people? Oh, my God. <laughs> so, um, first of all, let me just say that Josh and Kat there, like, even security, it was just so fun. We laughed so hard and had yeah. so much fun, and it was the most easy, breezy film shoot I've ever done it all came together and just everybody was teamwork oriented and it was just amazing and Josh even picked up the camera a couple times and did some camera work for us like I didn't even ask him to he's like and he did amazing like it's just crazy to me um and Elfie did all of our freaking research poor girl like last minute and she just uh, thank god oh my god you know like I'm just so grateful you texted group chat that we had like just gotten in the room and she FaceTime. Remember you guys FaceTime? Uh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I just say it right now. I texted Elfie when we first got at, at the hotel. I'm not, we're not going to say what room we're in, but um, I texted Elfie and I said, I just got, I just got to the, the hotel. She's like, can I FaceTime you right now? And I was like, yes. She's like, I just want to see it. So I literally FaceTimed Elfie and I walked her through the whole hotel and she was like so excited. She's like, oh my God, it's so good. And, um, yeah, I laid on the floor <laughs> in the other room. I was just lying on the floor. My God, it was huge. Yeah, it was, it was so cozy. Yeah, I mean, one side was, one side wasn't for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we just yeah. <sighs> that that is in the future, so we can't keep that in the future. But um, let's see. Let's talk <laughs> about some behind the scenes stuff. I took a skateboard with me, and yeah, yeah. I shot some really cool like uh, the shining footage with my skateboard, and um, cat forgot that I was shooting 
like with a camera, like rolling. And, and it, like, just take in mind, like, when you're doing a, like, serious shot filming, it takes a lot of energy, okay? You have to, like, set the skateboard up. You have to get, like, we were using a camera and a gimbal, and, like, then Josh had to get behind me and pull my legs. Like, it's a major shoot, you know? Yeah. And I'm getting, and we finally get the shot, and we're like, okay, ready and action. And all of a sudden, Kat's standing there in the shot, and she's like... <laughs> I, I was filming you. And you're like, cats in the shot. I'm like, cats in the shot, cats in the shot. And I, I think she says this. Honestly, like, it was crazy because I feel like I was so excited to be there once we got everything down, but the energy there makes you, like, oh, it, yeah. you know, it's kind of, like, weird. It does. So I had to, like, reground myself after that. I was like, get yourself together, boo. Well, in God, my damn. in my episode of Paranormal Challenge, we messed up the history. Is there a man in your room talking? No. Oh. Gosh, I'm gonna have to do this something because there's some in here. Hang on, a are you sure there's no one talking in the room? No. Yeah, there's a man in there. I heard him, and it didn't come from my side. I just heard tapping on the wall. Anyway, well. Can we not? Can we not right now? <laughs> you never know what's gonna happen in a live stream. You know what I mean? People watch us just for the paranormal activity. I knew it was a guy. I. I knew it was a guy. He's probably from Jerome. If I hear anything else, I'll tell you. But it sounded like he said a sentence or something. He was like, maybe we'll have to go back and watch this. It's at 209, 209. Um, uh, what was I saying? Okay, so we did that. Um, we just had so much <laughs> fun so shooting. Job. Oh, my God, I heard so it again. Good. Heard it again. Are you guys, Did you guys hear that voice? It's a male? It, it's happened twice now. Anyway, if you've heard anything, it might take him a minute to respond because I think our feedback takes a second to get going. Um, yeah. That's weird. It sounds like literally there's like a dude over your shoulder like talking in the mic. Rude. That or else is from, from Tone of Paul. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay, so we went and ate at the hot hamburger for dinner one night. It was so cute. It is cute. And we walked down... Oh, so, yep, Nikita said, I'm hearing a man, too. It's on Kat's side. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. So, um, we went to the Haunted Hamburger, but we walked by the old building, um, which is the old hospital. It's, like, literally from the 1800s. And that's the building that I told you has crawlers, and it's, like, really, really bad. Mm -hmm. And they have... Oh, I just, <clears throat> I just heard something else, too. It sounded like someone was, like, singing, or, like, a man was, like, huh? Something like that. I'm going to take out my headphones. Okay. Should I just talk and just see if he responds to me? If there's somebody here, can you give us a name? That was weird. Something kicked on. You from Jerome or Tonopah? Are you a minor? Are you a minor? Can we have a name? I have no idea. I don't know. Well, I just did a mini EVP session and nothing came through. No, I'm just kidding. No. Okay. No. It's not convenient. It's convenient. It's every time I put my head phone. I was like, are you a minor? Are you from Tonopah, Jerome? Like, can I have a name? <laughs> Neither. It's more like my grandfather or something. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like something random. Um, anyway. Yeah, someone said I'm hearing. So yeah, there's everyone's hearing it, so that's good. At least I'm not crazy. Um, that's good. Um, I'm gonna cleanse after this. <laughs> just need a sage vomit. What do you think of the old hospital uh, in Jerome? Oh my gosh. There's something wrong. <laughs> there's something wrong with that building. Uh huh. I know. Yeah, I know. Like. I, I didn't I did not want to look in the windows I know Lonnie's no and longer the, there here? and they've turned most of the building into apartments which is so gross like that building the the top floor was the or was the surgical center 
and the amount of people that died up there is just unruly because it was from the 1800s when like explosions would go off and stuff like I remember being up there filming for a paranormal challenge and I literally remember seeing blood still stuck in the tiles and to think that they turned the top floor and the, the second to the top floor into apartments I'm like oh my god what were they thinking what are you doing? who would want to yeah. live there it was dark it was creepy and what was creepier is like when you walk down from Jerome Grand to where we were going to go eat it was like pitch black out there was no and dirt. there was no lamps mm-hmm. or yeah. like lights outside on the walkway so we were walking in pitch dark dirt and rock and I'm walking by this building and I was like yo something wrong and so <laughs> and that's the building by- I swear there's crawlers in I've seen them yeah and I, literally we walked by and I was like we're just gonna jog past this building it's great it's a good time and then I ate a great salad so it's a good time that's weird I'm still getting noises coming from over there now it sounded like a female or something they just want to be in on the conversation you know what I'm saying um no they want to give people I have a spirit box I should I I should get it out you can if you want oh I'm not doing the Estes method tonight I am tired (gasps) <gasps> oh oh my god that's that is an experiment we need to try what happens with the Estes method if we're apart from each other i know my oh, my yeah. aquarius brain is thinking this is dangerous like if you're there and i'm here and you put me on speakerphone but if you're in i'm sorry guys this is a private conversation that's now public wait what okay yeah what if what if you went live if anyone takes this idea, I'm going to be real mad at you. Ew. Um, creepy. You go, what? Yeah, okay, fine. I can do that, but how do I get you out of it? Because usually I have to tap your shoulder. What if you're in there for like an hour and a half or like two hours? No, that's not going to be good. You'd have to set an well, alarm or something on your like phone. How can something. I hear it? You'd have to put but, it on your um, lap so you could feel the vibration of your yeah, phone. Yeah, the vibration. That's yeah. true. Um, you should go live on GGD, and then I'll go live on my personal, oh. and we'll do it simultaneously at the same time. So people would have to watch both. Okay. But then we can save it and edit it together. Uh, okay. It's fine. I'll do it. Creeps me out, though. Anyway, sorry, guys. That was a private conversation. Glad we had it together. <laughs> this is our brainstorming. <laughs> this, yeah, this is what happens when we're in a meeting. Like, I have an idea. Oh, my God. I have not. Um, um, so, anyway, the investigation happened. It went really, really great. Um... And we were hungry and tired, so we all ate a bunch of food, and then we conked out. Um, security was not oh, comfortable sleep. with sleeping far from us, so they slept, like, in the hallway, which was, and they all, like, passed out. Kat and I slept um, in, a, in one bed, and we shared, it was, like, a king-size bed. And this is, this is the funny part. So, I, you know, <laughs> when you're, when you're coming out, like, you know, if you're, you know, most of you guys that follow me, you've you've been you're a ghost hunter like you know you know what it's like after you investigate it's like you're really hyped up and you're just like on edge and especially when you're sleeping at the haunted location it's just like 40 times worse you know what i mean because like now you've communicated with what's there and now you're like waiting to fall asleep when it's going to come after you you know what i mean which by the way we had like four cups of coffee during that investigation i don't know how we fell asleep (laughs) to be honest like how did we not have a heart attack it was like like, it was like 4 a.m or something down in coffee like jeez Yes. So we um, we went to lay down. Well, first I came in the room and like we were you know, in pajamas and whatever, and I went to sit on the edge of the bed. Okay, because I was just like once again you're hyped up and you're like ah like I just investigated for like six hours and I'm like ah you know, and I'm like you're trying to unwind to just like breathe and we've we've had coffee and we're like oh we can't you know, and so I go to sit down oh, on the bed. Cat's already in. <laughs> I can't even say this. That hurts already. <laughs> <laughs> it's like dull aching right Stop, now. Oh my god. I'm stressed. I'm stressed. I was laughing so hard I was crying. So like <laughs> once again you're like you're in a paranormal location. It's just everything's scary, you know what I mean? Like you're just on the edge. You're like thinking the worst is gonna happen, like a ghost is gonna pop up like boom, you know, like and so I go to sit on the bed, I'm just like, just get on your phone and get on social media, just like scroll through TikTok for like an hour, just breathe, you know what I mean? And she's already in bed with her feet under the cover. Why am I laughing so <laughs> And so she's got her feet <laughs> under the covers. I didn't see where her legs were. Why did your legs look so flat? Okay, that's my concern. Oh, my flat legs? 
Maybe. So I did not see her legs or her feet, okay? And so I went to it's sit down. I have my hands, you know, like this, and I'm getting ready to, like, just sit on the, the edge of the bed, really, like, <laughs> calm and relaxed. And I ended up putting, like, all of my weight onto Kat's foot, which I did my not know foot, was there. By the way. Which is having phantom pains right now on the top of it, but it's fine. <laughs> Wait, I don't, think, I don't know if people are going to laugh at this or not. They're probably thinking this is like the stupidest conversation. So all of a sudden, her, I, I lay like on her foot and it just like, it sounds like, it, just, it sounds like it broke in like 24 different places, okay? I was like, so proud. It was like, <laughs> so I can't. So oh, I, the first thing that goes through my head is not that it's her foot. It's that I think there's a fucking leprechaun under the sheet and I just smashed it. <laughs> I straight up thought it was a leprechaun and I, I was did. like, that was my foot. Well, no, it's, wait a second. I have seen one of those at the Stanley Hotel in Spirit, okay? It scared the shit out of me, okay? So I just, I, if I couldn't figure out what was so small... That I just like smashed in 25 pieces. And you just destroyed. Literally, you just destroyed it. So, I'm, so I, <laughs> I turn I'm around to Kat. I look absolutely horrified because I'm just completely convinced <laughs> that there's a well, gremlin. I, there's she a was... there's a gremlin, and I just smashed it. Okay. Woo. <laughs> So I turn around and I look at her just horrified that there's a freaking gremlin under the, <laughs> the thing. And she's looking at me in pain. And she's like, ow, my foot. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, total miscommunication. Like, Jesus. So she's in pain and I'm horrified thinking there's like a little creature under there. So anyway, that happens. And so at that point, Kat's just like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with the night. <laughs> we were laughing so hard. I, I don't know how Josh slept through it because we were like, Because oh, <laughs> you were like, why do you look so horrified? I was like, I swear I thought it was a leprechaun or something. <laughs> God, I thought I killed a leprechaun. Oh, it was, it was crazy. Oh, my, was crazy. my camera's blurry again. It must be my mom or it's the leprechaun. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's the, le the spirit of the leprechaun. <laughs> it's the spirit of the leprechaun. Coming through. So we decide to lay down and we're like, I, we both scrolled through TikTok for a while, but like, we were just like ended up passing yeah. out. So I'm weird, okay? When I sleep in a haunted location, I sleep with like a hoodie up. I like wrap my face four times with the blanket just this far up because you have to breathe. But I just don't, because things mess with you when you're asleep. Kat always makes fun of me because she's like, you look like a mummy. And I'm like, ah. no. You know what she looks like is that kid from Christmas Story. <laughs> Where he's like all bundled up. Do you remember that kid? Do you remember that kid? Oh my god, I can't. I can't. Oh, uh, no, I'm no, crying. So I'm so I'm like totally. But I'm I'm like you know what? So we left one light on just because it is Jerome after all. Okay, like Jesus. Josh said I didn't know any of that was going on. Josh just said I didn't know that was going. On. <laughs> yeah, he was out. You were out. Yeah, you didn't you didn't know that there was a leprechaun in the bed with Cat. You know what I mean? Um. <laughs> So, so it was my foot. So we left. <laughs> so, so, so Kat ends up passing out with like her phone on her face because I looked over at her and she was just like, Argh. and I fell asleep. But we left one light on in the corner just because you know it's Jerome and something kept smacking me in the face. Now this is when you know you're a seasoned investigator. Rather than getting up and running from a ghost hitting you, I took my hand and I just remember in the middle of the night I kept going. Argh. Like, when, anytime something would slap me, I'd be like, slap, slap, slap. So it just kept going away. I didn't even look. I didn't even open my eyes. I was like, leave me alone. Like, Touch me. No. I'm trying to sleep. I gotta. I have to drive tomorrow. So then, go ahead and, and, you know, share what happened with you. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so, like, I woke up because I was, I was just, like, shifting sides of the bed. And I saw... So the bed, so the bed was like here. Can we just say one thing before this? Because you told yes. me specifically before we even left that I, you said, and I quote, I want to see a crawler. Yeah, that's true. I did. So you manifested this. Well, Elfie would have been so proud. Elfie, you would have been so proud. I was like, I want to see a crawler. And I manifested it. So I woke up and I saw a crawler in front of the bed. But the light was um, on. In front of like the chest of drawers mm -hmm. the light was on and he was i say he because it was a, it was a it 
like a guy with tan skin and he was on all fours naked with no face yeah and he was sitting there on his back legs and one arm and he had one arm up so he was just kind of like it almost looked like he was getting ready to like go and i looked at him and i was like no <laughs> and i went to bed and i literally went to bed but you opened your eyes and you said it was gone yeah and then i i i said no i laid down I said no to sleep, no and then i looked back and it was gone and i was like that was uneventful that's when you know <laughs> you're that's when you know you've literally. been to too many paranormal places you see a crawler you're like nope i'm going back to bed <laughs> <laughs> ah. i'm so proud but it was also really eerie it was like creepy that it was bald like he was it was just all skin no face. On all four. Naked. And his yeah. rib cage was like out. No face on. He had he, four, you know, legs, but he was only on three and he had one arm up getting ready to like go. You said it was like human centipede ish looking. It was very, very human centipede looking. Yeah. See, but and I've never seen face. them in light, so I, it's interesting you say they look like they have skin because I've only seen it them. Looked, ugh. Like literally my skin tone. Ugh. is literally what he looked like. And what was eerie was how detailed his rib cage was because it almost almost looked like he had a concave chest. Ugh. To me it almost looked like his rib cage like went really deep in, like deeper than a humans. And it was just like wrapped around freaking alien style. So were you able to get a reading off of it <clears throat> just because Elfie and I both have different views on crawlers, which is fine. I don't care if, if we have the same views, but I just didn't know if did you read it's intention. I think they're, like, messengers for, like, other things. So, like, I think they come in to, like, spy, and then they report back to something else is my feeling of them. He, I felt like he was watching. I just, I felt like there was no intention to do anything. I felt like he was just like, who are these people? Mm. And I felt like it, the energy was like, these people have balls. Oh my god, Nikita just they? said we're going to make Crystal slapping the air into the gif. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, please. Do <laughs> please do that. Oh my god. Yeah, so babe. so how do you know it was male then, just energetically? Like, you didn't see, like, a dingling hanging out or anything, right? No, I didn't see a dingling. I didn't see a dingling. <laughs> <I> didn't... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Woo! Yeah, why haven't we been signed yet? I just need um, someone to help me understand that. Yeah, no, but it, it's it's shoulder structure looked very masculine and his head looked very masculine the way his ears were mm. um like it just i just got an energy read of just male so like that's it, i just want to know because i've never gotten a, a gender reading on it at all so it i didn't a guy it was a dude. interesting yeah mm. like straight up and it was eerie because the face the best way i could describe the face is like slender man mm. you know how he has like, just like yeah but you like yeah face, like yeah yeah, I had a Slender Man face, but, like, with my skin tone. Ugh. And he was straight up just naked, and I was like, no, <laughs> no. no. I don't see no dingling with your naked. I've had naked. too much coffee. I've seen no human centipede dingling. I'm going to bed. And then he's gone. As so I'm just, like, like oh. slapping the air. I'm like, get out of here. Oh, God. It's got leprechauns on my feet. <laughs> oh, like God, your poor man. foot. I Like, guys, seriously, it's not funny. I thought I broke her foot. Honest to God. I was like, what? I mean, it is funny. That's it why I funny. looked so horrified, because I was like, oh, that leprechaun's dead, bro. <laughs> yeah, it is. I think it has, just has phantom pains, okay? No bruising of her. No I can't bruising. breathe. Poor Josh is in the other room. He's not far from us, but I'm like, we're going to wake him up. We're, like, screaming. screaming. We were laughing. Literally. Oh, my God. It was so <laughs> bad. <laughs> How, how would that be possible <laughs> sitting in Jerome literally just rolling? Just, well, like the super well, awesome <laughs> these entities in the, in the place are probably like... Well, we were both we're worried about you. you we, we were worried about each other. I was worried about your foot. But you were, were like, why do you look so horrified? Because I was like, because it was a leprechaun. Like, I just think it, I was all night I kept saying I'm convinced it was a leprechaun. I was freaked out I by it. I was like, Crystal, that's my foot. <laughs> it was my foot. I pulled it out. Oh my god! Like, so sick. We got issues, man. Oh my god. So yeah, that. Oh, and then there was another thing that happened. We can talk about because um, we didn't get it on camera. I think I just heard another voice. I think I just heard another voice. They're probably like centipede dingling. Yeah, I know. They're probably like, who are these girls? My god, don't. I think if we had a show, it would be hilarious. That's all I have to say. Okay. 
going to haunt somebody else. These people are weird. <laughs> like, literally. So the next um, day, the next day, Josh and I are, like, loading the car. Yeah, so I had a phone call. I had to take a phone call, so which was a whole other conversation in itself that I can't talk about, um, if that was an experience. I went up to the third floor to take a phone call, and it was a thing. Um, oh, yeah, you should anyway. talk about that, too. You should talk about both of them. Go ahead. Yeah. I forgot okay. about that. I was like, yeah, I don't not... share your phone call with your mom. And then I was like, oh, no. never mind, the dude. The we dude. Did, we did, but we did catch that on camera. We, we did talk about it on camera, so I don't know if you want me to or not. We did? Yeah. We caught the dude on camera? I went, I went up to the front desk. Oh, the, never mind, we can't share that. Sorry, I forgot. Okay. It's fine. Um, just kidding. But third floor is haunted as fuck. Just wanted to say that. Um, fourth floor. Anyway. Fourth floor. <clears throat> fourth floor. Fourth floor, excuse me. Um... I was, it was the morning. I took a phone call. I had come down from the fourth floor. <clears throat> Crystal and Josh were gone. They were just loading the car with the gear and luggage and all of that to, to get checked out. I was on, um, I, I had my luggage on the bed, our bed, and all of a sudden it's morning. I hear, hello. And it was loud. It sounded like a speaker, like one of those really old school speakers that you see on the wall, like the brown intercoms. And it sounded like it came from the dining room. And I literally thought like an announcement was getting ready to be like, come, come out. Um, and there's nothing there. So Kat calls me, she's free, cause she's alone in the room. She's like, oh my God, is there, is there an evacuation? Do we need to evacuate? And I'm like, well, where do you want to go? <laughs> like, where do you want to go? Well, cause I was like, I just heard something. It literally sounded like a woman. She was like, hello. And I was like, Siri, where are you at? But no, really, like, there was a speaker. It sounded like there was an um, amplification or, like, intercom. Old in school, night. like, like old school hospital, like, speaker system. Yeah like, yeah. yeah. like, yeah. Back in the day, type of, even, like, the vocal tone was just different from how it is now. Right. Very interesting. And we yeah. asked them if they had a speaker mm -hmm. system, and they are like, no, no, not at all. They, and they said they had never heard that before, mm -hmm. either. So, that was a new one for them. Yeah, that was, was interesting. Really that was creepy. Yeah, broad daylight, broad, which would make sense if it was residual. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's it almost like a nurse, like saying hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah, poor Josh. He did great though, man. Like that was a serious location for Josh. But my God, on he, no sleep. Yeah. Yeah, he'd yeah. flown for like twelve hours and then he he was dang. But died. And then <laughs> died. <laughs> <laughs> he was like the crawler went up to Josh. He's like, I don't care. Honestly, it's gone. I was like, you know, we're gonna go to Cat and her leprechaun foot. That's what we're gonna do. Okay. I'm crying. Oh my god, the foot. No, um, crazy. what else happened? Um, what else happened in Jerome? That was we went to Cottonwood quite a few times. That's a cute town. It's a lot bigger than it used to be. If you've ever been to Jerome and Cottonwood, Cottonwood used to be really small. I haven't been there in years, and it's huge now there's like a walmart and all kinds there used to be only a, a handful of places to eat um because it's just very small town but it's like a full functioning city i went into the grocery store on the way out i had to get some allergy medication and i was in like full ghost girl gear like black oh docks you know oh, like buddies. my lace <laughs> And, uh, yeah, Kat and Josh stayed in the car. I ran in to get allergy pills, and I, I went in, and this guy walks up to me. He's like, you're uh, not here. You're not from around here, are you? And I was like, do you think? Do you think? He's like, I've never seen anybody wear Doc Martens before. And I was like, he's like, where are you from? And I was like, Vegas. He was like, makes sense. It's <laughs> like, okay. People are weird. Yeah, but because so I'm wearing Doc Martens, I'm from Vegas. Like I don't, I don't understand, but it's fine. Now, you know? can we talk about um, the footage in the valley? Which valley? You mean Tonopah right or there. wait, wait, which? Um, like on that like strip of road. Strip of road. In Jerome. Remember, um, no, it, Death Valley. Oh yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Oh yeah, okay. we'll get there. We did go to Sedona. You love Sedona. Oh, man. I'm, I'm going to live there. If you're spiritual in any sort of capacity, you need to either go and or live in Sedona because it will change it your life. Yeah, yep. it was an emotional experience. Yeah, Kat wants to live in Sedona. I will eventually probably buy mm. some sort of little, like, condo or something. Just I mean, it's only three hours for me anyways. But, yeah, I mean, it's – you want to talk about, like, I mean – The tea. Yeah. There's so much tea. I loved it. Yeah, everyone there is just so, like, zen. And the energy there is very just like mm -hmm. nice, weighted, grounded, really even, 
everybody's really kind. No one's really in a rush. Everyone's just very you know, methodical and just they just are. They're in, they're present. It's very spiritual. When you get like a, they very and like when you get a group of people like that, especially in such a beautiful area, um, it's just otherworldly. It's beautiful. I took you to the shopping um, area, which is one of my faves. I mean, I love shopping anyway. That's <laughs> fine. But um, they have Native American stores, like any kind of they have pagan stores, witchcraft stores spiritual stores paranormal stores like literally anything you can think of on the spiritual side is there and they welcome all of it it just and i loved the native american stores they were amazing um different tribes different indigenous tribes um i can connect with i just love and it, it's just the the shopping's amazing too for being such a it, it's a small town but it's not i feel like mm, it's a big small town <clears throat> that makes sense mm-hmm but the rock is it's beautiful. Very, there's waterfalls. Cool. There's hiking. There's um, the healing vortexes. You can hike there. It's amazing. It's amazing. Oh my god! Thank God I didn't drive that on the way out because <clears> it's like on a fucking cliff. It reminds it's me like of Colorado. Like, yeah, like I, don't, I know. That's yeah. what you were saying. I was like, oh I god. I drove out of Sedona. I mean, I think Josh probably could have handled it because he's done a lot of um, road trips. So I I drove out because people are very you're you're nervous when you're like I'm from Colorado. So I'm from Colorado, bro. Yeah, it, it is. You're, it is. There's a ledge, and you're. You know, a lot of people were driving very, very slow, and I, I can just whiz right through there because like, I grew up in the mountains, so it's fine. Um, yeah. So yeah, we went home, and then that was it. That was good. That was good. Arizona was good, and yeah. then we decided to do another film shoot, and this time we were stupid and didn't take security with us. We did. Yeah. We and did. that will be the first and only time that we don't take security with us because it was and, not safe. And security was not happy that they, <laughs> they were not with us. But we learned our lesson. Sorry. Yeah. We're like, oh, I was like, oh, we can go to, t- it's going to be fine. Like, it's not, you know, we got this, we got this. So we drove through, um, we, we drove up to Tonopah and that is a very haunted. It's got like the Mizpah Hotel, the Clown Motel. You drive through Goldfield. I know if you're a super advocate of paranormal, you know what Goldfield means um, <clears throat> and a few other locations. But um, yeah, we drove up to Tonopah. <clears throat> it's about a three, three and a half hour drive. And uh, it was nighttime when we drove through, so we weren't able to be in Goldfield till the, the following next few days. But um, we, we got to Tonopah. Um, it just does, it, it, you know, these small towns, like, compare, I'm going to put, let you do this, compare Chloride to Tonopah to Goldfield to Jerome. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Jerome is welcoming. Jerome was welcoming. Tonopah was a little bit... Sketch? More, like, yeah, it was sketch, but it was also had more to offer than Chloride. Chloride was uh-huh. definitely the bottom of the totem pole. There. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the bottom Goldfield, of the totem pole. Goldfield was like, I feel like it was just kind of like slapped on the map, and it's just like, oh, Goldfield. Yeah. I feel I didn't feel like it. Like Tonopah was definitely a little bit more touristy without it being touristy. I mean, mm-hmm. they like had two restaurants or something, mm-hmm. but at a gas station. But there was more there than Chloride. And Jerome definitely had the most. But Goldfield, it was like, you would drive to Goldfield, and you were like, oh, you're in Goldfield, and now you're not in Goldfield anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no gas so... stations in Goldfield. Like, that's how no, small it is. there's something weird going on. There there's is. There's something weird going on in Goldfield. Yeah, yeah. There's, so something's not right. Yeah. Tonopah's sketch yeah. only in a way of, um, I don't think the city puts a lot of money into it when they should, especially when they have... Shame! T- I know. I mean, well, for having two major haunted locations like that, that's major tourist attraction, which is the Clown Hotel and um, the Mizpah. So it's a lot. Like, we got we got to know some of the locals while we were there <clears throat> in Tonopah, and it's a lot of just generational people that have grown up there their whole lives, and, like, they know that it's been on TV and all this stuff, and then, like, they, they pick you out. They actually are very welcoming if you're into paranormal. Um, they are. They kind of called us out. Everybody kind of just knew why we were there without even talking to us. It's true. I'm uh, besties with the owner now. Clown Motel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wish you could see my face right now, okay? You know what? what? With it? Nothing. With yeah. that? With that? I'm just going to say that the owner of the Clown Motel may have a thing for cat, and we are welcome back anytime. That's all I'm going to say. Anytime. 
anytime sweetie sweetie and it by the way wasn't looking at me when he said it so i'm just saying um also he took a lot of pictures of cats so that's fine so you can hang them on the wall you know what i mean there's a mural of you that's there great yeah, great wonderful uh do a cord cutting ritual at the next hour it's gonna be fine oh my God. Oh, there's one fine. you know it's fine you know um no, they. I think outfits. they really. They were excited that we were there. They, he, they he, were. And he, they were very kind. Yeah, they looked up Ghost Girl Diaries and he was like, "Oh my God, you should have warned me before you came." And I was like, "Well, I don't know. We're just chilling. You know what I mean? Like sometimes it's fun to not. I don't. I don't necessarily always call and and do it the professional way. You don't really have to if you're renting a room to just investigate. You know what I mean? Um, but he, yeah, it was it was great. Like so, we've been welcomed back anytime. Um really great experience no no bad experiences with the clown motel itself like it was great oh. like great great um everyone was welcoming uh, hi i i i'll tell you guys it's a great place to go for a paranormal investigator definitely a good place for like amateur rookie uh you know like level because they're very welcoming and they like to talk about the paranormal not every location will be that way some some locations are very private they don't want to talk about it um some of them are ashamed about it, and they're not there. They welcome it. They want you to shoot there. They want you to have video footage. They want you to do something with their location. Um, so, yeah, that's a good one. And uh, Ms. Pa, we, we, I think if I'm comparing the two, we did go to Ms. Pa. Um, I think Ms. Pa is way, way, way more haunted than the Clown Motel is. Um, we got some a lot of insider information that we can't share because it's going to be part of the feature of the Clown Hotel. But... Um, I don't think anything bad or like negative necessarily resides there. A lot of people like me to, cre you know, uh, clear that up is like, you know, if it was on Ghost Adventures, is it demonic? No, it's not. I, I don't think there's anything demonic at the Clown Motel, honestly, at all. No. I didn't sense that at all. Um, no, we slept great, actually. That was the best place. I, that yeah. was the best haunted location I've ever slept at. Yeah. That, that's great. why I think that's that for a rookie or an amateur, it's a perfect place to go. Because a lot of people don't have a lot of money to stay somewhere else or whatever. And it is. It's the perfect place to go because it's not scary to sleep there after you've done an investigation. So, And we stayed in the most haunted room and it was the exorcist room and it didn't it didn't phase at all. Bestie. Yeah. I was with my bestie on the wall. Um, now, I'm, I am going to talk a little bit about... Um, a little bit about... The feature... I think I just heard a okay, whistle I'll on your you side. It sounded like a female whistle on your side. Um, I know, I know. You'll, you'll have to say it. Um, the Tonopah um, Cemetery was that. way, way more haunted than the actual Clown Hotel. Do you agree? That Yes, that is all you know. Um, yeah, that's, that was crazy. Elfie not only did our historical work um, for all the locations, but she also did our post-production time stamping of paranormal activity and um and i love you elfie thank you by the way because you saved my life Mom, with that yeah um uh, now remember elfie has done some shit okay like um she was on you know a show it was like kind of a big deal called it's like my second favorite paranormal show called paranormal state and so she's been she's seen some shit elfie's seen some stuff she's been to a lot of locations and i mean I hate, I'm so jealous that she investigated Mothman. I'm never going to drop that until I finally go, okay? But um, <laughs> I'm never going to let that go. It's Let's like, go tomorrow. God. Um, but um, she was like, I. she did the footage of the graveyard that's outside of the Clown Motel, and she was like, that was some of the scariest shit I've ever seen in my life. Like, literally. So for El she, she was like, this is not right. Like, something's not right here. And um, <laughs> also scary during it <laughs> yeah um it. which and i'm gonna give a sneak peek by talking about this um you know but i'm not releasing i did release a little clip on tiktok if you haven't seen it you need to go to our tiktok which is ghost girl diaries i released like a three minute clip of us in the graveyard um <clears throat> so you know i've i've been on a lot of investigations i've been i've been in the the public eye since 2011 but even before then i was into paranormal for my whole life and growing up outside of the stanley hotel <clears throat> i can't tell you i've been there hundreds of times literally at the stanley hotel like i i, I can't even keep count um because it was literally in my backyard you know so I'm go there. oh we should we should but you know what that one is um 
probably equivalent to Jerome, but it depends. You know, it, the worst part about Stanley Hotel is you don't know what what it's going to be like the day you hit it. And what I mean is, is that some days it can be a friendly haunt, and other days it can be a really dark, icky place to be. And I think it's because that um, it sits on courts, so they claim like you know energy shift in and out when it's built on courts. And it's just something like when there's bad energy there, it's bad. <clears throat> I told you I saw like a four foot troll thing manifest in the concert hall of the Stanley Hotel. Um, and then in the presidential suite is where they have Native American spirits that I've seen, which I'm indigenous, so I'm not shocked by that. But that's where I saw that little leprechaun, le leprechaun thing with Billy from uh, Ghost Adventures. Protect your leprechaun foot next time. <laughs> you know what? Here, here is the uh, what is the, the twist? The twist. It was actually my foot. It was actually there. Jesus. Time traveling. Your Back foot there. was at the Stanley Hotel twenty my, years ago. Just okay. My, just oh. my left foot. I can't. I literally can't. <laughs> And then you had a flashback in Jerome, and you were like, "Whoa, oh. that was Cat's foot with Billy." Okay, if you, I wish you, know. you guys, if you could have seen my face when I sat on her foot, I looked like I had just saw a demon. I looked horrified. I was like, "Oh boy!" Horrible. That is <laughs> okay. Oh, Whew, I'm sorry. Time. It's just something always we can't, go back to it's, the leprechaun. It's, yeah, it's, that's going to be one of those one-liners. Like, if you missed that stream, you missed so much. You know what I mean? Like, I've, I've got to crochet you a foot. With, like, a oh, God. Hat on it. Like, with, like, with a leprechaun's hat on it. <laughs> oh, my God. Even oh, then, God. every time I'd ask her, how does your foot feel, I would just burst into tears and laughter because I was like, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be mean. Oh, okay. Um, Give her major side eyes. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> Oh my god. Whoa, you know what's funny though is that the number one comment that I've been getting from people, I'll get back to the story in a second, the number one comment I've been getting from people is that they love our jokes and how we laugh on the stream. And it made me laugh because I'm like, I thought we were like annoying people, but apparently they <laughs> Literally how we are on the phone. It's like sometimes we'll be on the phone for like two hours and we're just la we're not even saying anything. We're just laughing. Oh god. The leprechaun foot. You should, you should make hair. a lucky leprechaun foot keychain, knit that shit, and sell it. That's what you should do. Oh, like a rabbit foot. Oh I would buy god. it. <laughs> leprechaun foot. It's so All messed right. up. I'm copywriting Whoa. that. Oh my god. <laughs> messed up. It. Oh, Whew. All from that one someone, night drum. someone just draw this and make it like <laughs> limited, limited edition stickers of like... A little foot. Leprechaun foot. Oh, a little foot! <laughs> oh my god! That's already taken though. Oh, uh, is it? Yeah, Littlefoot, Bigfoot. Oh, is it? Movie. Oh, I, yeah. That made me sad. That's a sad topic. Time? Yeah, time? Yeah, that's... Time. God, that's depressing, man. I can't go there, okay? I hate that <laughs> okay. movie. I used to cry yeah. so bad as a kid when I'd watch that. It's childhood trauma. I would I would cry with Fox and the Hound. Oh, that St. Bambi? Oh. oh. Do you want to kill yeah. me? Do you want to break my heart? Oof. Horrible. Traumatic. Anyway. Well, you want your foot broken. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Um, okay, so back to Tonopah Cemetery. So we yes. we decide Crystal's got the great idea that we're gonna just get the worst over with first, and we're headed to the cemetery first. Honestly, it was smart. <laughs> I'm kind of glad. Was it? Because I feel like it wasn't. Well, so, we needed to rip that band-aid, So God, and it was only like nine or ten o'clock at night. It wasn't even that late, and it was just bad. But energy-wise, it felt that late. Okay, it felt that late. I'm telling you, it was otherworldly. So, you, like, the cemetery sits on the side of the Clown Motel. The Clown Motel sits at kind of like a corner lot, and then it's on this side of the Clown Motel. And, um, it looks old, because it is old. And you walk down, like, just a few steps, and then you walk down a few more steps, and you're in the cemetery, and... Uh, we hadn't walked through it during the day. It was only at night. And we get down there, and whatever's in there makes us feel like we literally can't go in. Like, there's, like, a energetic wall that, like, like if we step foot two or three more feet, it will get us, whatever that is. I don't even know what that means. And It was in, in front of us and in back of us, and it was before the entrance. And it was, like, it would not, it, it, whatever it was, was, like, 
don't even think about it. Like, and it was like, even if I tried to go, I could feel it was like, don't, I'm, I'm, it was like a warning. Yeah. It was like a warning. And, um, I don't even know what it was. Cause like at first when we went down there, it didn't feel like bad, but it was eerily quiet. Cause it's a small town vibes, whatever. But, um, I don't want to talk about the sheriff, but I do want to talk about, uh, let's just back up for a minute back up for a minute and how far are we backing up that we're backing up to death valley oh yay okay so we can't talk about that. yeah because i mean that wasn't really in the we didn't really film that i mean i got some like b-roll footage of that but it's not really going to be in the pilot so or it's not a pilot it's a feature film i keep calling it a pilot i'm sorry um i've never it's filmed a f- yeah so yeah. we're driving into this old like haunted ghost town just to like get some really cool b-roll footage and um, I told Kat, oh my god, the sunset looks, like, amazing on this road. I need to stop on this road. And this road is basically a part of Death Valley. Um, it's a huge area of Death Valley. And it's weird because we just we just left. Oh my god, something just hit my chair really hard. Really fucking I hard. I heard it. Did you hear that? I heard it. All right, who the fuck's in here? Because uh, don't, don't do that while I'm streaming. That pisses me off. Here. That don't pisses me off. Here. Don't come here. That pissed me off. Don't kick my chair. Disrespectful, and I will sage your ass out in 20 minutes. Anyway, um, that was hard. That was like, it like kicked the underside of my chair. I heard it. I heard it. (sighs) Alright, well, I hope it's not, I hope we're not dealing with what we think we're dealing with here as we're about to talk about it. So <clears throat> we're in Death Valley. I pull over. I get the drone out, which is a process. You have to put it all together with the pieces and the propellers and stuff. And you have to, like, start it up. You have to get it connected to GPS. It's just a lot. So as I'm doing that, now in Death Valley, we just passed this really small town that's in the middle of nowhere. But, like, now we're in an area where there's nothing. There's not even cars coming through. It's a de- that Death Valley is what it, you think it is. It's desolate. There's nothing there. So as, as I'm, yeah, a huge strip of road. Two, two-way highway, and that's it. And, like, dirt and rock and and mountains, and that's it. And so I'm messing with the drone. And I'm trying to, like, focus because, like, we're trying to, you know, rush for daylight. And Kat's like, Crystal, Crystal, Crystal. I'm like, what? She's like, Crystal. And I'm like, what? And she's like, something's over there. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, something's over there. I was like, Kat, nothing's over there. We're in the middle of nowhere. Nothing's here. She's like, something's over there. And I'm looking, and now I can hear, like, rock, like, footsteps in rock, right? It was that, and there was, like, a weird sound. I can't even pinpoint what the sound was. It was just monster-like. It was monster-like. And it was once. It was once. It happened once. And then I was trying to get your attention, and it happened again. And then that's when we heard, like, rock fall. And I was annoyed with Kat, because I'm just like, I think she's freaking out. I think she's overthinking it. And then all of a sudden, I start to hear it. And now, once again, we're in the middle of freaking nowhere. Like, literally, like, not even close to anything. And Kat's like, I'm like, okay, and now I'm hearing it, and you're right, I energetically, I could tell it wasn't human. I don't know what that means. It wasn't an animal. We're not dealing with, like, a mountain lion. Uh, and all of a sudden, so, like, I finally launch the drone, because I'm trying to focus, because, like, and, and if, I don't know if any of you are drone pilots, but, like, it is a serious thing when you're doing drone footage, because you don't want to wreck the drone. Like, you have to be in pilot mode and focus, and... You have to get the footage, and you only have a certain amount of time for that battery to die, and it's just, drone footage is really hard to execute. And, and you're, you're flying something that's like a $5,000 piece of equipment. If you wreck it, that's literally somebody's car. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's a $5,000 vehicle, literally. So, um, so I, I finally launched the drone, and I'm trying to focus. Cause I, I can hear it. I know something's over there. And I'm just like, okay, I can do this. Just focus, just focus. You can't land it wrong either. It'll wreck it. And all of a sudden, Kat's like, I just know it's a skinwalker. And I was like, are you serious? And she's like, I just know it's a skinwalker. And she's like, I don't know why I'm saying this, but she's like, it knows you're indigenous, and that's why it's here. And it was communicating. I think there was more than one. I think there was more than one. Because... 
where we were at, the long strip of road, you have these like like these dunes, like these. It almost looked like dunes, but it was mountains. Um, and I, it, I think it was communicating to something across the way. It was like a major sense of urgency to like hurry up and go because something was about to go down. So I did the drone footage shittily, <laughs> but I did it. I landed it the drone. Fun. It did look okay, yeah. but I landed the drone. Got it. We, I didn't even pack the drone correctly. I threw it in your lap and you put oh. it away. But here was the eerie thing too, is that the weather started to get real strange. The, yeah, it was trying remember to take the windy, drone down. Yeah. Remember how windy it started to get and mm -hmm. you couldn't land it, uh -huh. and we were getting concerned because we wanted to get the hell out of there. Yeah. Like there was, it was, it was almost like it was trying to trap it, yep. trap us. I could if so drones are very lightweight but yet heavy. I know that sounds strange, but like when it's in the air, if you're trying to land a drone with wind, and and I did not. First of all, you don't launch a drone in wind. Period. Because it will fly away and it will wreck and you'll be screwed. So that's weird. You have like a weird shadow in your picture. Is it this way? Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys see so. that? There's still a shadow like in the bottom corner. Well, I have a light behind this. I have a light behind this backdrop. No, there's still a shadow like there. Over there. I wonder if something's standing over there. It, it's, it would, yeah. Okay, people are saying they're hearing things and they don't know which side it's coming from. It's probably the stupid skinwalker. That's not, I'm not gonna manifest that. Um, that's weird. Anyway, yeah, it's like really. Yeah, it just got like really dark over here. Yeah, do you see it? It's lightening up a little bit now, but it's still dark. Um, <laughs> ducking, <laughs> slapping away. Do you want a leprechaun? Do you want a leprechaun foot? Do you okay, want a leprechaun foot? <laughs> Do you want a leprechaun foot? But these God. entities are like these bitches. Oh my God. So, so we get in the car. I throw the drone on Cat's lap. Cat's like trying to put it away. And and Cat's like, I'm just telling you, I know it's following us. She's like, we're driving in the Charger. She's like, I just know it's following us. And we got up to this other ghost town that we were filming at. We had to film more, like, B-roll footage and stuff like that. And Kat, the whole time, she's just like, I know it's here. It's following us. I just know it's following us. Skinwalker? Yeah. So, or Minnie? You thought Minnie. I think it's, I think it was two. So, they were communicating. so we wait till it's about dawn and, and it's, like, getting darker. And we decide to leave. And now we're headed back toward on the main highway because we kind of like went off to another area. And now we're headed towards okay. Tonopah. Okay, well, so this is where we were going back to Tonopah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Was this about the, sh the floor shake behind me? Yeah, I thought I heard like another voice w right before like you it said was that. Like, a stop. like it was like a stop. Huh. When it must be transferring back and forth between us while we're yeah. live. You know what? I got my Zen guard. I'm telling you, that oh, kick okay. on my chair scared the crap out of me. Like, I do not like that it was stuff. Loud. That was aggressive. I heard that. Did anyone else hear that? Oh because yeah. I heard it. It almost felt like a slap. It was. It felt like somebody. Like you know when you were in high school and somebody kick your chair out. Like if you're sitting in your chair, that's what it felt like. It literally felt like a foot was under my chair and kicked me, and I was like, um. So we go to Tonopah, we go to the graveyard, and we're having all this these weird experiences that I'm, I'm not going to share. But there is a point, which is what creeped Elfie out when she watched the footage. We believe that, and I called it out on film, that the skinwalker is there in the graveyard with us. And That's when it got real weird. That's when it got real weird. And when I called it out is when really weird, bad stuff started to happen. And um, it sounded like it was like morphing into different animals, almost like you could hear like a crow and a bird, and then it sounded like maybe like a deer and an antelope. Um, we heard dogs barking, which it hadn't happened at all at that point in the night. So it was like morphing. But you're zoning out. Are you getting a reading? Um, um, sorry, I just like I don't know why I just zoned out while you were saying that. That was really. I know. Okay. Um, by the way, Kat's, ab Kat's abilities have increased since you last saw her. Um, and she's actually been channeling shit. And uh, so, yeah, that's, it's been really cool to use her in investigations. Um, but anyway, 
yeah, we think we had an encounter with a, with a skinwalker, and that was Elfie. I, I apparently in the film I said. Okay, well, you know, we, like, took a break and left the graveyard, and then I said, okay, let's go back in, and Elfie was like, how about we don't? How about you don't go back in? Because even Elfie's like, I could just sense that surge of urgency of just, like, you should not go back in there. It's not safe. Um, that is the first time in my career of paranormal that I didn't feel safe. We didn't go back into the graveyard because I knew if we did, uh, something really bad was going to happen. There were other things that were happening, um, in the distance, and I don't want to talk about it, but, um, I assume it to be paranormal, but if it was not paranormal, it was going to be a life-threatening situation, and I decided to dip out, and we didn't go back to the graveyard. Whoa. Yeah, you yeah, you're glitchy. Whoa. That's weird. Did you get no did you hear something? No, that was just my whole my whole thing just like froze. I know, it was glitching. So, um yep. to end that story of Tonopah, um we had gained the attention of a lot of locals and people were wanting to take pictures of us, which they did. <laughs> and, um, which was cute because it, I ha I have really bad imposter syndrome. It's really bad. I don't think I'm, I'm important. I know that sounds terrible. I, in my head, until I've accomplished getting the series signed, I'm not good enough. And until I've accomplished getting the series signed, even though I have millions of views on YouTube, it's not good enough. So I don't, in my head, I'm really bad about thinking that I am somebody. So when people see me and, and want pictures with me I'm it's weird because mm. I just don't think I'm important I know that sounds I don't know why um, so people wanted to take pictures with us and the last person that wanted to take photo with us was a creep and Dude. that was when we should have had security with us so I'm going to let you tell that story uh, well. um, so I was in our room at the time. Crystal had taken out the drone to do some last minute B-roll footage and, you know, drone footage of the whole location and all of that. And, um, she was outside by herself and I was conversing with somebody that was chatting about some things going on within the vicinity and we made friends with somebody and all that. Um, all of a sudden, I get a phone, a voice memo. <laughs> A voice memo from was it a voice memo? I thought I texted yeah, you. A voice memo. Was and it you were like, urgency? You were like, yeah, because you were trying. Yeah, you were. You were just like, I could you like? I need you to grab the charger. Can you come out here with the? I need the charger right now. So I was thinking, oh crap, the drone's like mid air, and I like she needs she needs something. You know what I mean? Let's try to find this charger, and I couldn't find it, so it took me longer to get out there. I was like, <laughs> I'm I sorry. I was like, I literally don't know what she's talking about. I have nothing to give to her. I'm sorry. So I, 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 I I'm going to get fired if I don't find this charger. <laughs> charger, because, like, we had only brought one that thing back into the room to charge. Oh, no. And I ran outside, and I was like, what are you talking about? I was, like, yelling. I was like, what charger? You were like, come here. And I was like, what? And you were like, I was like, okay. So I went over, and there's this creepo freaking dude standing with Crystal, pretty much harassing her. Oh, and um, she's sitting with her drone and she's clearly like turning her back to him like not engaging in conversation like not even wanting to go there and I walk over mind you she and I are in these like black dresses well we looked like gothic like dolls because we were doing like, b-roll yeah. footage I had a like, dress on a short dress he was trying to take pictures of up my skirt which he would have been very disappointed because I had sh I always have shorts on Anybody that wants to take a picture under my skirt and my dress, you're going to be very disappointed. I got shorts on, boo. I got him dead. Well, we go over. I go over and, you know, I could immediately tell what was happening. And, like, my Aries just, like, went on because I was like, yo, don't fuck with me. <laughs> like, we, okay, we don't have security. I'm your security right now, okay? We're going to have some issues. I don't care if I'm in a dress. And he looks over at me and he goes, why are you dressed like a Mormon slut. And I was like, 
excuse me? <laughs> I feel like he said it and I was just kind of like taken aback by it. He goes, yeah, why are you, why are you ladies dressed like Mormon sluts? Well, he knew who Ghost Girl Diaries was because he had his phone open to the YouTube channel, but he was like. Right. He wanted to know like, like what we were doing and like what, like why. <sighs> and he wouldn't stop saying it. He was standing next to me. He was trying to take pictures with me, and I kept saying, like, I'm not the kind of person to say no when people ask me for a picture. Like, I'm not rude. Like, unless I'm having, like, a bad day. Like, you're just, it's going to happen. You know, like, people, like, everybody's a person. You're going to have bad days. I don't usually say no, but this guy was just, he kept trying to, like, put his arm around me on my shoulder. And I was like, no, no, thank you. No, no, thank you. Plus, I'm, I'm in the middle of trying to shoot footage. I'm in cinematographer mode. No, I don't want to be, I don't want you to be handsy with me anyway. Like, just leave me alone. I kept walking away from him, turning my back to him. That's when he tried to take pictures up my skirt. And, well, and then I was walking behind you, and we went to the cemetery. You know what I mean? To just get away and, like, have a conversation. And we literally just left him on red. So he was left standing there like an idiot, because he is an idiot. And, you know, went off to go and do his thing. But, like, any time we were in the vicinity or had to go back to the room for something. Here he comes. He was like peering around a corner and like would come and follow us and i was like well not every day you're called a mormon slut yeah we're, <laughs> we're mormon sluts now apparently mormon sluts and now. then he's and like or are you like going to a funeral and i cat was like i was like i, Kat was, I literally looked at him i was like why would we wear this to a funeral <laughs> like, like we walked really? away and cat was like I'm not going to a funeral, but I'm a pagan witch, and I'll bury you in a fucking jar outside of the desert, though. <laughs> I was like, oh, Literally, I was so triggered. Oh, my God. Jesus. Uh, and then that's when we texted Josh. <laughs> like, you know. Josh was like, I knew I shouldn't have left. I just knew it. And I was like, yeah, never again. Not doing it again. Oops. I learned that lesson. And no more ripping the Band-Aid filming without Josh. <laughs> okay. It's okay, we survived, it's fine. But, um, we could, we got through it. But. I, you know, it's like, I forget, though, that people, like, are going to recognize us. I know that sounds stupid, but, like, I just forget it sometimes. And it was my first time experiencing that. That was how, my first time experiencing How did that feel? It was weird. Mm -hmm. He was like, especially, like, when we were inside, we were standing next to, I think I posted a picture about it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. We were standing next to that haunted clown. Mm -hmm. Remember on Ghost Adventures where, like, the hand moved? Mm -hmm. Like, Zach, where the hand moved? Yeah, we were standing with that clown. And the owner was like, can I take a picture of you guys? Well, mainly was you. <laughs> I was like, what? He wanted a picture oh of your leprechaun what? foot. <laughs> I should have posed. I should have posed, like, done a yoga pose with just, like, my left foot. I'm sorry. No, actually, no, I'm uh, glad not, because that's sick. People are sick. <laughs> they will probably do something with it. Oh, my God. Oh. Hi. Don't be uh, sick. That's the clown motel. Okay? Leprechaun foot fetish. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. This podcast is I... <laughs> end. Great. This is a great return, you guys. We've missed you. I mean, so you know, much. the first part was sad. The second part, is, it's, it's ending <laughs> on a high note. I feel like that's where it needs to be, you know? <laughs> Paranormal activity, and we're laughing. <laughs> what happens when you see a demon? Oh, it's a leprechaun foot. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Leprechaun um, foot, guys. Don't. Yeah. It's fine. So, yeah, so you, yeah, you got, you got, um, you got noticed. How did, it's, yeah. it is weird when it first happens, isn't it? Because you're just kind of like. Yeah, I, was, I was like, why? Like, I was sitting there <laughs> why? like. Why? <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? You know, we're just... Because uh, to me, in my head, I feel like I'm so ingrained now when it comes to the producer side of things. I'm like, I'm working. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, why? No. I think it's funner. Like, I think there's a difference because it's like when when actual fans come up to you, to me, that's fun. That's, that's fun. Yeah. But it was like the weird. It but was when, it's, when it's like the, the secretive like crush and then they can't like just be normal and that yeah that gets creepy then you're kind of like mm, okay thanks you know what yeah. i mean can you just be no. chill and be like hey what's up do you want a picture and i'm like you know yeah you're right um you got a few, <laughs> got a few. <laughs> sorry i'm sorry guys that leprechaun thing it's never gonna die it's just gonna go on y'all are now gonna be dealing with this with us okay the series is gonna get signed and we're gonna be at like waverly hills and we're gonna hear like something move and i'm gonna be like was it a leprechaun foot and only people that listen to this stream are gonna know <laughs> you know what we need to do is like you know how in destination fear they have like that dakota's duck thing yeah i have a leprechaun foot <laughs> a leprechaun foot 
Who can find the foot? Oh my god. Who can find the crochet foot? This is so sick, bro. It's like It's chilling with the uh human centipede dingling. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Whoa! Wow, it was fun. <sighs> yeah, that was our road trip. It was fun. We um It was great. It was fun. Ms. Paw's cool. We're gonna go back there and hopefully film too. We wanna go back to Ms. Paw. It was Ms. Paw's really beautiful. It's um it's very, it's, you know, I mean, the clown motel, it looks like a motel. Like the, it, it's interesting, though, because they, they have literally thousands of clowns that are, I asked him, I said, where do you get the clowns from? And he said they get them from just fans all over the world have been sending them in for years. But since they've been on the Travel Channel so many times, they send, just people send clowns and they, there's clown art. Anything you can think of clown related, it's in there. There's clown posters, there's clown, people have drawn pictures, there's chalk art of clowns there's there is knitting cool. clowns that are knitted i mean it's literally there was a what was that board in the 80s and 90s that we played like a light bright there was a light bright clown that was in there too like literally anything you can think of um if that you, back room is messed up yeah that back room with all of those trinkets in there there's some there's something in there yeah they apparently there is a clown spirit there um we did ask the housekeeper about this because we didn't experience the clown uh spirit but um she said she's seen it and she doesn't she thinks he's harmless she doesn't know who he is and and uh, so that would have been interesting if we would have captured that but we ended up communicating with a lot of spirits from the graveyard and uh yeah it was peaceful you hearing some no i don't know why I, I mean i guess it's not that out of left field but clown john wayne gacy yeah there's a new sh documentary coming out about him on Netflix on the 20th. Really? I haven't seen that one. I'm going to have to watch it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. We were talking about clowns, and I was like, that's, this is messed up. <laughs> yeah, that's... Don't make it. <laughs> what do you do when you want to relax? Watch a serial killer documentary. It's fine. Um, okay, let's see. We're rounding down to the last few kind of topics here. So we want to talk, chat a little bit about TikTok. We are... Oh, so exciting. Yeah, we're kicking ass on TikTok. We're at almost oh, we're 10K. Not. Yep. And uh, mm -hmm. next week we should be um, we should be live on TikTok, hopefully. Elfie, um, her next few topics are going to be really interesting. We're going to start talking about occultists. Um, we're going to probably... We're, I think next week's Alice Crawley again. Because we, we only ch touched base on him a little bit. So we're going to talk about Alistair Crawley. Um, and then... She has some other occultists that we have on the list that people haven't really heard of from like the 17, 1800s. Um, I just think it's really important to talk about like weird paranormal occult stuff from back in the day because it helps us understand how, where we got in modern times with like paranormal and, and being into, you know, spiritualism and the other side. And um, we're also, um, this podcast should be called The Tales of the Leprechaun Foot. <laughs> oh my God, can we? <laughs> Oh my god, Cat! I think you should start that series on your TikTok. Oh my god, you should start some like weird series on TikTok where you take like a crocheted leprechaun foot to like haunted places and just leave it there. Oh my god! I, okay, I can't talk about it on the stream because it's really messed up. But you know what I'm talking about. I do. Um, your foot, your leprechaun. Yeah. No, I'll call you after this and we'll chat about it. I'm scared. Dude, remember, I was said I was gonna like crochet little things and then put. Them oh in yeah, house. yeah, yeah. Cause you're fucking weird. But not that, but, okay, but not that. But do the foot. Like, yeah. There you go. But do like a foot or. <laughs> or go to Salem. Can, you you're so close to Salem. Like, Just drop it off in Salem. I haven't been in so long. Um, I should do like a ghost, like my crochet ghost, but with like a leprechaun. Oh my god, that would be cute. I'm just saying, you should start a series on it. There's your, there's your, your gig. Um, we're, we're, all, we're 300 followers away from 10,000. Not even. I think we were. I did the math and it was like 240 or something earlier. Something. Oh yeah. I did. Exactly, yeah. Now I'm gonna do. Now I'm gonna do the math because I'm OCD. 97.69. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Nine. Follow up. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. I rounded up a little bit. Okay, what's the number? 9769 We're 231 231 people away. If you're not following us on TikTok, be one of those 230 people. Um 
I was going to film today for TikTok, but just I was prepping for the stream because I haven't done it in so long. It took me a while. I know. Um, and, and yeah, we're revamping social media and YouTube. A lot of people are asking me what's going on with YouTube. We were going to stream to the new um, YouTube channel, but we don't have enough subscribers there yet. Um, I think I'm just going to start uploading to both channels and see which one starts growing. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start um, filming uh, shorter videos, like 10 minutes, and upload them to... Um, the YouTube channel. I'm going to do random stuff. I want to talk about like dark directors. I want to talk about haunted locations. A lot of people are asking me about reviewing um, reviewing paranormal shows again. Um, I have a couple opinions on that and you're probably not going to like it. One is if Kat came to Vegas. Oh, it's getting dark again on that side of the camera. It's creepy. I don't like that. Ugh. Um, if Kat comes to Vegas, which I'm sure she'll be back, um, we will probably do booze and reviews. That will be fun because we drink wine and it's it's fun to do live. Um, Dude, is it happening over here now? No. Do you see that? No, I don't see it. I don't see it. I see it in that bottom corner though. That it's really dark over there. Like you can hard. It's like it's blending in right. with your shirt. Um. But I just don't have an interest in reviewing paranormal shows anymore. Is that bad? Like, I'm just being honest with you guys. You guys don't want me to do content where I'm not happy. You know what I mean? And it's... Well, and you don't, and you don't want to do content. You know what I mean? Like, it's because you're the one doing it. Well, you know? it's just boring. Like, I've done everything I can as far as reviewing paranormal shows. You guys know what I'm going to say at this point. My, my camera's blurry again because my mom, or Skinwalker. Um, and I just don't know. I don't know. It's a leprechaun foot. Um... I, I don't know, I just, I find it boring. Like, I don't want to review Ghost Adventures anymore. I'm bored. You know what I mean? Like, I... I, I feel like we're going into Ghost Girl Diaries 2.0. Yeah. You guys. And I feel that with all of the change that we've been discussing and everything that we've been through, especially Crystal, things change. Yeah. And that's okay. It's not meant to stay the same forever, you know? And... We're kind of just embracing that change, and it's still going to be incredible content and incredible stuff, and your support means so much. But it's just time yeah. to switch it up a little bit. Well, and I know? think we're, I, I mean, Kat has, has definitely had a spiritual evolution, but so have I. And, like, I, I'm at a point where, like, Elfie, Kat, and I were in a conversation the other day, and I was like, what's the point of Ghost Girl Diaries? I don't want to, I'm not here to prove that ghosts exist anymore. Like, too many shows have already done that. Paranormal exists. If you don't believe it, if you believe it doesn't exist, that's because you haven't had a personal experience. I cannot give you a personal experience to believe or not to believe. That is up to you to figure that out. If you don't believe in paranormal, it's probably because you're scared of it and you don't want to open yourself up to it. That's not my problem. Not to, not to sound mean, but like, I've already, I've already proven myself as an investigator. I've proven myself as a filmmaker. We're about to release another feature film. It will be released by the end of this month. It will be done um, to more film festivals. And I assume it's going to get picked up by even more film festivals this time. Because um, it's going to be... It's amazing. This is amazing. It's, it's nothing you've ever seen before. And my point behind Ghost Girl Diaries isn't... I don't want to be the investigator that keeps asking the same questions. Who are you? What's your name? Did you die? Are you a demon? I feel like that's the only question everybody asks nowadays. Are you a demon? I don't care about that stuff anymore. And and here's why. My mom has now crossed over to the other side. She is home. My questions now are, what is it like? What do we do? Why do we incarnate? Like, I have serious philosophical questions that I want answered now. We've already established the other side exists. Now what's the next step? And yeah. And for me... It's going backwards if I'm just reviewing ghost ad adventures. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, well, I, go ahead. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It, it, we're not here to convince people that the paranormal exists. No. Because we already know. They, people know. You either are you or you're not. There's really no middle ground. Yep. You know, um, it's, it's more than that. It's it is. More than that. The, well, and, and now that my mom is there and I'm so close with her, I'm so connected with her, like, I have so much to share with you guys about the other side like do not fear death honest to god like of course we don't want to quote die but do not fear death 
it's just going home. We're literally just going home. We're not from here. I'm telling you, I know from my mom. I'm literally living through her. She lets me see things now that she's there. Like, this is a temporary vessel. I'm literally sitting here in a meat suit, human suit, on a floating rock out in the middle of nowhere because we're here to spiritually evolve the planet together. And, and for me, it's through the eyes of paranormal and, and the other side. And my guides have come through. Like, I have so, like, even with Kat, Kat's been there. Kat's been the one channeling my guides, helping me. Elfie's witnessed it. Like, we have so much more. Like, Ghost Girl Diaries 2.0 is going to be so much better than just filming Ghost Adventures reviews. It's so yep. much better. It is. It's time. It's, it's time. evolution. It was, a, it was a part of the, it was part of the path. Mm -hmm. Got it to where it's at now. We're moving on. Yep. Yep. So and I don't wish, good. you know, anything, anybody ill. Like a lot of people think that like Zach and I have beef because I reviewed his shows. There's no beef. There's no beef. I think that there was some turmoil that happened when I reviewed his, um, I poorly reviewed his museum the last time I was there because I had a really bad experience. And so it wasn't just me, it was my producer friends. And um, I just, I don't want to review anything anymore. I just, I don't, I don't want to review anything related to Zach. I, I have a lot of people that used to walk up to me and think that Ghost Girl Diaries was paid for by Zach or associated with Ghost Adventures. And I don't want to do that anymore. I didn't mean to do that. I honestly didn't mean to do that. When my intention of the YouTube channel, when I started reviewing ghost adventures and other paranormal shows, wasn't, was to literally teach people about film and paranormal, what's real, what isn't, um, matching things up with historical references, um, and really teaching people about how to merge paranormal film with film. And, and showing you what to look for, what's good, what isn't. It's, it was really just a film critic thing. I didn't mean to merge with Ghost Adventures that much. And I'm really trying to break that. And I think it's been enough time where Kat and I and Elfie have established the podcast. And now, once this feature is released that we've all been working so hard on, you're going to freak out. I, I'm not going to even doubt that this gets picked up for distribution. Do you think, Kat? I mean, do you want to, do you know, you want to explain oh, what distribution is? You want to explain that? 100%. I think that this is going to go places. I think you're going to be seeing this feature places. In theaters, possibly. To watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's unlike anything you guys have ever seen anywhere especially with ggd but outside of ggd as well and um i think i will be as so bold as to say that it's going to change the face of paranormal it is and we're not going to release that because you keep your mouth buttoned because we don't want other people to like you know bag on us but until things are done or in stone you don't share it you know what i mean because you can you can mess up the laws of manifestation but i will say that you know when cat and i went on this road trip and um, yeah, I see there's questions coming in. So if you guys have questions, I'll answer them when I'm done with this. Kat and I went on this road trip expecting it to just be a normal paranormal investigation and we're filming it. And it was anything but that. Um, we actually, we used the Estes method, but, which is why we were talking about it earlier, but um, we've taken it to a whole nother level that... I didn't know it could even be taken to. And um, we filmed it. And it's going to blow your mind. Like, the investigation that we got, even Elfie was like, I've never seen anything like this. I've literally never seen anything like this. Like, we literally have invented a new way of investigating. And that's why I think this is going to take off so, so well. Because... Everybody keeps leaving comments on social media and saying, I'm bored with Ghost Adventures. It's the best show, but I'm bored with it. It's because there needs to be something new and fresh. And we accidentally came up with something that we weren't even prepared to come up with. And, um, yep. which is the universe. Which is the universe. Yeah, some of the best things in life are unexpected. Yep. All the thing, best things in life are unexpected. So, someone said, Diana said, what would you say to someone who had a dream about someone who died and then they died months later? How, what, what do you do? Um, that's a premonition and whoever had that dream is probably gifted as a psychic or, um, or a medium. And if it's something that you 
do not want to re-experience. You need to start grounding yourself with med meditation and you need to start having some really in-depth conversations with your guides and call them in and tell them what you allow in and what you do not allow in. If you don't want those abilities, you need to tell your guides, I, I, I want to shut those abilities off completely. Um, but I don't think it's something you should... I've heard this before. People had dreams about people dying and they blame themselves like they brought it on them or something. That's not even... No. One, one thing that I've learned, and this is, once again, with me sharing my experiences with my mom now that she's crossed over, is... The only person that controls your soul's journey is yourself. No one else controls that soul's journey. My mother had the option to stay in her body and be a vegetable and live in a nursing home for the rest of her life. And she chose to exit her body and go home. So in other words, we are in control of what we do. We are completely in control of what we do. Um, don't think that you caused this by having the dream. So you just whoever this is just needs to set firm boundaries of what they want to allow to come in and not allow. Is that how would you word it, Kat? 100%. 100%. Someone said, I have uh, precognitive dreams, and um, yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. Like, it, it can happen. But, uh, but be careful, too. Like, if someone actually died, then yeah, you're having some sort of an ability. But I can't express to you guys, after my mom has passed, how important dreams are. I'm going to beg everyone watching this stream to start tonight or tomorrow journaling your dreams because your dreams are not dreams. They are messages from your guides and your ancestors and your family and whoever's crossover. I can't tell you how many nights Christian was with me when my mom was dying. Christian is my ex, but we were best friends for years. He's definitely a soulmate. If you follow me on social media, you know, I've talked about Christian a lot. And he was with me almost nightly in dreams. And I'm telling you, the dreams were so vivid, which is why it's so important. When you get these dreams, they are trying to communicate with you. You need to remember your dreams. Write them down. It's not just a dream. It, have you ever had one of those dreams where you, like, remember a place? And you wake up and you're like, well, I've never experienced a place like that on Earth. That's because it's home. You're having a, a dream from home. Have you ever had a nightmare about being murdered or killed or something? You just accessed an Akashic record. You need to write it down. And you need to talk to your guides and ground yourself and meditate more so that you're on a higher vibration with them so that you can communicate with them. And they will help you understand what it was that you experienced in your dream. Don't be afraid of it. But if you are afraid of it, it's okay. Then tell your guides, I don't want to access this anymore. It is too much for my 3D human brain. And a little witchy tip, if you struggle um, with remembering your dreams, you can get a um, dried mugwort bundle and hang it above your bed. Um, that will help you, those properties will help you to remember your dreams. Or you can take dried mugwort and put it in a little pouch and put it underneath your pillow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and set your intentions with it, of course, but... Um, it helps immensely with remembering your dreams and sometimes having lucid dreams depending on what you allow to happen. So, so Diane is saying she's having some vivid dreams. She needs help and she needs guidance. Um, she's having dreams of literally like things out playing in historical uh, present presences. Yeah, you're, you're, uh, you have abilities. You have abilities. And um, there's a few reasons the dream journals are good. It's one to remember it for yourself. Because I'm telling you, if you think you're gonna remember it later, you're gonna only remember pieces. That's why you need to write it down. A week later, you're only gonna remember pieces. Number two, that's another way for you to communicate with your guides. You can tell your guides, I am communicating with you through my journal. I give you permission to read my journal as I'm writing it. And you can even write to your guides in your journal, but you have to express that approval. I give my guides approval to read my journal. And you, you have to ground, if you're really tapping into these things, you've got to start meditating daily. And it's hard, but it's a habit that you have to start. And meditation grounds your mind. From what I've experienced with my mother, we are not physical on the other side. So the bodies that we have right here, right now, do not exist there. We are a vision, okay? Um when we come here 
it's heavy. We are literally carrying a meat suit around. And all that's left that we remember is our conscience. So when you start to meditate and ground yourself, it grounds your conscience back to where it's used to being at home, not here. So if you're getting these abilities, you've got to reground your consciousness to be able to connect with the other side. But I can't tell you how important dreams are and to write them down. One thing too, just for like a, like a critical point that I'd like to make, not only for if you're into spiritualism or if you're experiencing trauma, I have felt very alone. And I say that not because I'm alone, because obviously I've cat is like my sister, literally. But without my mom, I feel isolated. She was the last mem family member I had. I literally have no family now. She was at, I'm, I'm solo by myself. And my guides are like, you're not alone. We have been with you the whole time. Stop saying you're alone because you're not alone. So you, ha if you have these abilities or anybody for that matter, you have really important messages that are trying to come through and you're not focused on yourself to get grounded and meditating to be able to get these messages clear. So you've got to start working on yourself and your own energy. And that's, there's so many things. There's internal energy, which is your conscience, which is, like I said, meditating, listening to binaural, bin, binaural, binaural beats. I can never say that word. Um, what else? Meditation, that, that's good. Yoga is good. It's, it knocks your, like, consciousness out because it makes you, like, focus on one thing. And then you also need to make sure you're paying attention to what you're feeding your body. If you're a spiritual being, having those connections to the divine and your guides... If you're just feeding your body like processed sugar and stuff, it's going to mess up all of your like consciousness. So you've got to really start like tapping into that, which is honestly a whole nother stream, but I'm, I'm not going to cover that now. But um, yeah. you're not alone. And like if these visions are scaring you, then you've got to talk to your guides. If they're not scaring you, then, yeah, you can set boundaries for sure. But if they're not scaring you, then you need to say to your guides, I'm getting the information from you, but I need to understand what you want me to do with it. Do you want, you know what I mean? Like, what do you want me to do with this information? And they will tell you. Um, have you heard of Lilydale Spiritual Community? Have you heard of Lilydale Spiritual Community? I have not heard no. that. Is that a spiritualist on TikTok? There's a couple spiritualists that I follow, but I'm careful with who I follow. Like, I love Dolores Cannon. If you've ever done any research on Dolores Cannon, I have one of her, a couple of her books behind me. Um... She's amazing. She did past life regressions and she wrote books about it. And, um, like our souls literally talk about what we're like home. Like this is one of the hardest planets to incarnate on. And whoever comes here is really strong to be able to do it because it's a very low vibrational planet, meaning there's darkness, there's hell, there's war, there's crime, there's death, there's murder. Any, like, when you incarnate here, anything can happen, which is kind of my mom's story. She incarnated here not planning to be murdered. Murders, murders don't, they're not usually planned. Now, Christian was murdered, but he, he tells me that he did have a plan to die early, so I don't know what that means. Now, with my mom, she did not plan to be murdered. But you incarnate on this planet. Like, I've been... She's she's told me and my guides have told me she was not supposed to die yet. My mom was not supposed to die. Her soul contract was not supposed to end yet. However, when we incarnate here, we know that we're incarnating to a low vibrational planet. And that can happen. And the way my guides explained it is you could literally step off your front porch and get hit by a car or get in a car wreck and die. And you'll have to go home. It's just, there's, we can't control those outcomes and that's part of our soul contract is coming here is knowing that sometimes we have exit points. My mom had an exit point. She could have chose to stay, but she would have been in a vegetative state. So she chose to leave. I also learned from her that when you're in the process of dying, so she was kind of dying for about 11 days, she was not in her body most of the time. She would come visit me and she would say, I, my, my body's decaying, it's dying, I'm not there. I don't want to sit for 24 hours a day in a dying, decay body, so I have left my vessel. So, I mean, I have so many more, I don't even want to call them beliefs at this point, because it's like knowledge. I, just, I, I don't want to sound cocky, I'm not trying to sound cocky. It's just that my mom died, and I'm so connected with her, that like she's telling me literally what it's like to die, to be on the other side. Death is not the end, it's literally going home. We are here temporarily. Um, 
Write down dreams. Yep, I'm just going over questions. Um, Diana, if you need any more advice or anything, you can always DM Kat or myself on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> Yeah, meditation is really big. Why does it feel like my dreams are different? Oh, why does it feel like my dreams are different lives that you've been living? You're accessing Akashic Records. That's awesome. That's Akashic. If, if it's, yeah, Kat and I both had that experience. Kat has had some way like old time 1800s, right? Like you're a girl in the 1800s and you have like big floofy dresses. You, Kat also thinks she was alive when Lizzie Borden died. Yep. I think I was a child. Mm -hmm. You walked into the Lizzie Borden house and you like remembered it like perfectly. So yeah, if you're having oh, yeah. if you're having dreams like that, you're it's probably Akashic Records. So you need to write that down. It's really important. I've had some really crazy dreams, some really crazy dreams. But but it's not just a dream. There's a difference because I've had nightmares. You know the difference between when you're really really stressed, like my PTSD, and I get up in the middle of the night looking for my mom, versus when you're having a memory. There is a difference. And when you're accessing Akashic Records, those are literally your memories. They're literally your memories. Um, let's see. Why does it feel like... Okay, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. That was a good stream. Wow. This is a good stream. It was. How am I? I know that's been the biggest question in Instagram, and I haven't really been responding to people. There's a lot of people asking me where I've been. I haven't been responding to text messages from friends, and I haven't been responding to DMs. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm just tired. I'm 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 having mental health, yeah, too, and I've been open about that. I have really good days and I have really bad days. I just came out of like a two week spurt where I was like in a really bad place, and now I've been really okay again. But the problem is when you've when you've experienced something like like a, a family member being killed, it's a very strange. Uh, it, it it changes the wiring of your brain. And, um, I am going to be okay. I am going to be okay. But, um, I, I am isolated. And I've isolated myself on purpose because I am only allowing those who understand to access my energy. I put up really strict boundaries. So, Kat, Josh, Blake, um, Elfie. Only people that really deserve to be in my energetic field right now because if, if anybody comes in and disrupts it, like it's going to be worse. Like an example is today I had another friend text me and I decided to text him back to be nice and he was like in a really down depressive place. And, and I, I know it sounds mean, but I just couldn't, couldn't go there because I will, no, I'll go there. You know what I mean? So I'm just being very careful with who I'm communicating with and it's just um I'm okay I'm gonna be okay I'm of course I'm sad it's only been a couple of months since she died I am traumatized I am absolutely traumatized she was my best friend she was my mother we we had a very unique relationship she was my biggest fan and I am devastated she will not be here to see the next phase of my life which is marriage children um maybe getting the series signed releasing a documentary a feature um, I just won five film festivals. I'm just getting started. Like, I haven't even gotten my life done yet. And she's missing all of that. And I'm disgusted. I'm just disgusted. So, um, you know, and you'll see it on social media. I, I've been very open on social media. I've gotten really positive feedback. People are like, I appreciate seeing you as a public figure, not pretending like everything's fine 24-7 and it's not. I'm going to have good days and I'm going to have bad days. And um, I'm going to have days... It, it, Days I've disappeared from social media are the days I get the most messages. I, I don't have space for it those days. I'm just, there's some days I'm not going to post and I'm going to disappear for a few days and it's just mental health. PTSD is serious. Dealing with the trauma of a murder and, a, and a, someone being killed is, is so traumatic. It is so traumatic. And I don't want to say I'm happy I experienced it because I'm definitely not. But I will say that it gives me even more empathy, empathy and compassion for these haunted locations that we go to. Because I feel like at this point, it's so disrespectful to walk into a place as an investigator and say, were you murdered? Like, uh, now that I've experienced that, yep, yep. 
unless and, th- and like literally I, i'm going to therapy and my therapist said less than two percent of the population has experienced someone in their inner circle being murdered so people aren't going to understand that we watch murder mystery documentaries all the time and they throw around the name or the or the word murder constantly and so easily but until it happens to you it is so triggering how it's so easy for people to just throw that word around and especially for investigators to me like if you're a murder victim or even if you had a family member be murdered to just walk in so freely and just be like were you murdered is so dark to me so i just feel like it's going to be another reason why and what ghost girl diaries mission is is to go in with empathy and compassion to these beings and not be an asshole i just feel like that just hasn't been done because it's been all men in the field and and now that i've experienced some, some trauma that these entities have experienced yeah you know it needs to be handled a different way so thank you guys so much for tuning in next week is elfie we're going to do occult chats with elfie this this was a heavy podcast but funny in the middle with the leprechaun foot i'm really ha- i'm really glad that i we got to get this out we needed to you know you still have a shadow on that side it's getting darker and it's just creeping me out i'm gonna have to take care of some stuff after this oh i'm gonna stage after it kicked my chair like i'm not even messing around like that no no okay especially when we were talking about and my mom like okay let's get that straight too do you think my mother is the one that kicked my chair yeah i don't think so she's not gonna kick my chair to scare me you know what i mean so (laughs) Anyway, um, so yeah, next week's Elfie is, it was the leprechaun foot that kicked me. It's, that is kind of a gross joke, though, isn't it? Like, <laughs> It is, you know, but I'm going to crochet it anyway. I'm, t- I'm telling you, you need to turn it into a series where you, like, leave a leprechaun foot in, like, Salem or, like, Concord and tell people to go find it and then be Take like, yeah, I'd be like, here, I, I left it here. Look where it's at. Thank you guys so much. No more heavy talks. This was the, we needed to get this out of the way though. But you know, as sad as it is, what we experienced with Lily and Diva and my uncle and my mom, the happy side is, is this, this documentary that we're going to release is going to be amazing. And, um, Elfie, shout out to you. Thank you for helping me. Josh, we love you so much. Thank you for going. And we will never leave without you again, (laughs) ever, ever, ever. And, um, you know, the last thing I have to say is we're signing off as Mormon sluts. And yep. other than that, amen. A- amen. And I'll pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> I will pray for you as a Mormon slut. Oh my God. You know, that's just going to be my slogan from now on. Oh God. Live your authentic life. You know, there's one you lesson know? I can give you from my mom. It's just live your authentic life like don't don't cover up who you are don't be ashamed of who you are you need to like whatever dream or passion it is especially now that my mom's gone i feel like i'm going to be going after this paranormal dream even harder than i ever have like i literally have i've done i have side jobs all the time i have quit all of my production jobs everything i am only doing ghost girl diaries right now and i'm not making much money off of it But I know that that's the only thing I want to do. So that's the only thing I'm worried about right now. So just follow your dreams. And life is really short. Like my mom was 72, but it doesn't matter. Life is really freaking short. And it's just not enough time. So like start now. Like just follow your dreams and start now. And that's all from the Mormon Sluts. Watch for cats. Leprechaun foot. Come on, just just crochet the foot. I'll do it. I will do it in Salem. <laughs> All right, so keep an eye out, y'all. I'll write a pattern. Oh my god, we're glad to be for back. Elfie, Elfie we love you. you. Thank you, Elfie, for we everything. love you, Elfie! And as always, we will catch you guys. Dad, 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 dad.